Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. So today we had Brother Adam on the podcast, and it was incredible. We talked about so many different things. We talked about different hadith. We talked about different verses in the Quran and how Allah is always near and dear to us. And again, how important it is to have a steadfast mentality when it comes to Islam, deen, and always seek knowledge and seek intelligence from people around you. And again, always, always be good to your parents. Stay tuned. Here it is. Brother Adam, what are you passionate about? Oh, like that? Th- 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 sound like that? Straight like that. Oh, Bismillah ar rahim Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajma'in. Um, man, off the bat, what am I passionate about? Okay, I would say I'm passionate about a couple of things. I can't really put it into one. I can't like bring it down to one thing. Mm-hmm. But if I were to say what I'm passionate about, I would say uh, traveling the world and having the ability to... To help others that are less fortunate than me, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like building orphanages or going to like villages and communities. Because I was in Kenya the last year, mm-hmm. and I was involved in a lot of like giving out food and traveling. And there's actually a friend of mine from London, a good brother. Uh, shout out JF Inspires, it's my guy. Every Ramadan, he would do like a like a, a food drive, or he would do a distribution. So he would go to like villages where people like don't go. And those people are there, like, living on their last leg. Like, yeah, people that are blind, people that are old, people that are dying of hunger. And he would go unannounced. Like, the people wouldn't know that they're coming, and he would, like, give out food. So one trip last Ramadan, when I was there, I went with him. And bro, it was emotional, man. Like, you see people that, that they don't know what their next meal is. You know what I'm saying? They don't know, like, they have literally no hope. Mm-hmm. All, the, the only hope they have is... I have Allah on my side. That's mm-hmm. it. Like, I know food is coming. When? I don't know. From who? I don't know. But the food is coming. And, was, and what was even more shocking when I got there was how even when they got the food, their first in- instinct wasn't, okay, how much can I get? It was, what does the next guy need? What does the next person need? How can I give out more food? Because I know someone else who needs more than me. Even though the person got nothing. But he's thinking, yo, how can I help the next person, my neighbor? I have a cousin who needs more. I know an old lady who needs more food than me. So when I seen that, I was like, and alhamdulillah, I traveled a couple of times. I've been to a couple of places. So when I, I got the passion of both, putting both together, how can I travel the world and enjoy experience in life and different cultures and countries and meeting new people and having new experiences, while whilst at the same time, how can I help others that are less fortunate? Mm-hmm. So I think my passion is like kind of both put together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But of course, he needs finances for that one. So yeah, inshallah, yeah, yeah. inshallah, man. It's but I'll say those two together are what I'm very passionate about. If I, if someone were to tell me, right, you have like all the money in the world, what are you going to do? I'll say like, travel the world, right. Apart from like seeking knowledge and Islamic ilm, but traveling the world, right, seeing the the ard of Allah and helping others, man. That's what I'll do personally. No, that's awesome. It's cool because even Islam is being like the foundation of one's life, but then. The traveling is fun, right? It's of nice course, to see different things. Oh, and I remember amazing. when I went to England, I traveled abroad. Uh, being Egyptian, every time I go back to Egypt, seeing new things, things you've never seen before, it does kind of like evolve your brain. Like you kind of yeah, step yeah, up yeah, another yeah, level, yeah, yeah, another yeah. level. Mm-hmm. And you feel like, wow, look at the different culture in Italy and how the different food they're eating. But at the end of the day, it's still such a simple thing where it's a carb, a protein, and yeah. a salad type of food. Okay, cool. The, the, no matter where you go, mm. there's so many differences and What's similarities. What's funny about that is traveling, it builds character in the sense where like, I was talking to a friend of mine recently about like following rules. Like, you know, Canada, America, or the West, they have systems in place where you have, like, systems. Okay, now I go to, for example, in America, you go to a restaurant, right? And you're expected, like, to give a tip. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you look, like, they look at you crazy, like... Like you're a jerk. Yeah, Yeah. like you're, like a rude individual, you know? So when I went to Kenya, I was there last, uh, this year, I'm at a restaurant, and I'm sitting, and I'm waiting to be served. And I came early, like, I'm there, like, 10 minutes, and no one's coming, right? And I see guys coming, walking, hey, yo, come, yo, give me food, everything. I'm like... What's going on? So I had to become more assertive. Like you have to like get what you want, you know? Mm-hmm. So last week when I was in New York, <laughs> yeah, like so last week when I was in New York, uh, I was with a brother and we went to some some Yemeni shop. So he wanted like a, a, a plastic bag for his food after iftar. So there's a long line. Bro, I went to the front. I said, listen, I need a bag, man. Like I don't wait in line. I said, give me a bag. So want a bag? Okay, here's a bag. So it taught me like how to like, you get things done. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? How to like just be more assertive or, you know, like uh, the whole like, you know, like, in the West, you're too kind. 
Yeah, like you're too you're nice. Too everyone. nice. You're walking on eggshells. Yeah. Like over there, you're walking eggshells. People are gonna use you. Yeah. You know People are gonna walk over you. So you have to know how to like stand your ground. You know what I'm saying? And also, but like when you're traveling, you like see different cultures, how to deal with different personalities, how to deal with different interactions, right? Because you might go to a country where people's natural culture they're just more aggressive. Mm-hmm. That's how they are. It's normal. You know what I'm saying? Like example, you're you're Egyptian, right? Yeah. So in Egypt, oh my, they're they're aggressive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like naturally speaking, they're not like soft. But when you go like example Japan, they're more like, hey, how you doing? They're bound down to. Mm-hmm. They're more like respectful. So it teaches you how to like. Understand cultures and like deal with individuals because you can't have have that experience of interaction. So I think yeah. traveling it builds character, man. You you really see life. You know what I'm saying? No, I love that because it's so funny. Because when you said that about being Egyptian, like in Egypt, it's like yasta, yasta. It's like yeah, it's like, hey, hey. yeah. They'll they'll click whistle, at you. They'll whistling. Click yeah, at you. I'm like. Yo, this is so rude. But to exactly. them, they don't take it personal. Yeah. It's just like, hey, get my attention as fast as you can because mm-hmm. you need something and then I can help you and then I can go help the next person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or so that I can direct my energy to what I need mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. But you can help me right now. Even to this day, people will always be like, yo, Ali, how you be getting out of trouble so much? Like how someone, like, someone pulls you over, something happens, this happens. How do you smoothly talk your way out of it? Because I watch my dad. Like you said, like yeah. character. He traveled the world. He said that he went here, Germany, Sweden. He's been mm-hmm. all alone. He was younger. Mm-hmm. Then he taught that within us like hey make sure like when you communicate it's how you say it smile yeah. ask politely but be demanding of what you yeah. want directly mm-hmm. but also find the way Dif- people are yeah. different and it's all these little things you learn but again like you said like I, hey, y'all stop. Hey, come here like, yeah, I need like, your help here but in America if you would be like imagine you oh, click yeah, that someone yeah, here yeah. they'd be like they're harassing me they're this yeah, they'll, be, they'll be very offended very offended but man. it's not personal it's not exactly over there it's not personal like even traveling like with with like about that it's like you learn how to like find like uh different um what's what i'm looking for like ins and outs of, of situations or like how to find like uh for example someone who travels a lot right he knows how to find the best flights or he knows how to you know move his way into a first class or he knows like mm-hmm. a situation where he knows how to you know get a flight from point a to point b without having to do c you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying yeah. so you learn like ins and outs of ways how to kind of like beat the system how to you know no, know how no house yeah yeah no house so after traveling it teaches that a lot man especially with like communication you know understanding different environments and societies so yeah, man. So obviously, traveling is very. Pa- is, I'm very passionate about it. You can tell how I'm talking yeah. about it, right? <laughs> I'm very passionate about that. What's man. somewhere that is kind of on your bucket list of somewhere you want to go? But again, like you feel like it'll be hard to get to this location. My bad. I'm cold. So I'm holding my hands. Like I'm, no, you're I'm good. Freezing right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, you know, but uh, a place where I would love to travel to. Subhanallah, man. There's there's a, there's a lot of places I would love to travel to. But oh man, it's tough. Definitely in the Asia, man. Mm-hmm. Asia. Like Indonesia, I want to check out Indonesia. There's a lot. So basically, Muslim country, right? Personally, I'm I'm pro going to Muslim countries, man. Mm-hmm. Just like just having to experience the culture while also being having the freedom to pray salah, going to the masjid, the right. First of all, I'm a big guy on Islamic architecture. Yeah. So I love going to places and seeing like, yo, this mosque looks insane. Mm-hmm. Like the inside, how the outside, the 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 minarets, the inside, how they set it up, like those. Like different Muslim countries have their own certain like architecture, Islamic architecture. So I like seeing that kind of stuff. It's interesting, mm-hmm. you know. And it's very beautiful. So also Indonesia uh, countries. Oh man, I want to go to Maldives, man. Mm-hmm. Maldives is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, that's more like a more like a honeymoon vibe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so when I'm ready to <laughs> take my wife there. It's more like a honeymoon vibe. But I'll definitely go to Maldives, man. Maldives. Anywhere in like in Africa, man, I want to go to South Africa. Because mm-hmm. you South said you've been Africa. to Kenya, so I've been to Kenya, man. And I, one thing I want I want to push out is the whole like African narrative where like it's poverty and stuff. Guys, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's camera here, guys. It's, it's <laughs> not like that. I'm telling you. There's so many bougie spots in Egypt and things with mad money in Nigeria. I, I, I remember looking up things like how to buy real estate in Nigeria, how to buy real estate in Ghana, Z- yeah. Zimbabwe, Mozambique. And I'm looking at these properties. I'm like, dude. What? This is incredible. It's amazing. Especially like someone who's from Canada or the West, like America or Europe. When your currency is higher and you go to these countries, you're getting services better than America for cheaper. Mm-hmm. Like like you you go to places like, for example, Kenya, for example, or Egypt, right? You can get a nice house, an apartment that's fully furnished, beautiful for like $300 a month, mm-hmm. $400 a month, right? And this, and and you, you go to like a, a restaurant and you have services where people are like, Extra serving you, right? Yeah, making sure you making you're sure straight, you're you got straight, extra right? You know what I'm saying? 
and like hotel rooms and having cleaners and people like washing your clothes like having the luxury of people coming to your house and cleaning your house and washing your clothes and having a driver right having a maid in the house having a, a cleaner a gardener right a chef in your house for cheap you know mm -hmm. so it's more like y you when you go there you experience comfort mm -hmm. other than here when you're like always in a rat race okay wake up in the morning i have to make breakfast okay now i'm in work so like it's nice man africa is nice mm -hmm. very very comfort man very is, there's comfort in it you know there's there's life there man you feel you enjoy life over here time goes too fast yeah like i woke up this morning and it's like what it's already 5 p.m and i'm <laughs> like yo what happened today like i'm yeah. thinking about like what i did today you know but over there it's like the whole day you're always doing something you know so it feels more lively you my know? dad was just um my dad watches a lot of uh youtube vlogs where it's yeah. just like uh traveling here travel there and there's two things that I remember before I forget. The first one was you we were talking about going to Asia, right? My brother clicked a random video last yeah. night as we were eating iftar. Yeah. And it was like, uh, it was in China, right? And it was one of like these travel streamers that we were like watching. Mm -hmm. And he was basically traveling stuff. And the whole time my brother clicked on it, he didn't know that the title of it was like Muslim area, like the Muslim mm. area in China. Because obviously China has so many Muslims. Yeah. And dude, this guy was eating noodles and all these mm. amazing halal meat dishes, beef stews mm. and dumplings. <laughs> I'm fasting, bro. Relax. Man. I'm fasting. <laughs> Me too, right? So <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, um... He's like one dollar. Like mm -hmm. it was like, and the thing is, he would walk up to them because he obviously can't speak Chinese or anything. So he'd yeah. give them. They do everything through Alipay there, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, like I guess it's their ser payment service. So yeah. they would write in for him how much it was. And the whole time I was thinking there, like going back to the culture thing, yeah. none of them were skimping him or scamming him. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, were yeah. charging him what it was charged. Mm -hmm. And I was like, at any moment they could have been like eighty, and he would have yeah. been like, okay, I would have paid ten bucks for this. Yeah. But they they charge him a dollar and eleven cents. So. It's interesting to see that it's like they were honest the whole time yeah, too yeah, yeah. when they could have and it goes back to that culture that d and that like authenticity of the culture yeah, yeah, yeah. and so my dad was watching these videos and we saw a video about cairo or something mm -hmm. so we were like looking through and stuff we live in alexandria so we don't see cairo as often mm -hmm. so we're watching stuff and he's talking to me my brother and my mom and stuff he's looking at the tv and he's saying see how like we know in egypt right now like the currency has gone up like crazy and everything is so yeah, unfair yeah, yeah. and they're they're more poor there and it's harder to live there mm -hmm. right as an egyptian mm -hmm. But he was like, but look at how they're all sitting down happy, drinking together yeah, tea. Man. And well, they're that's, not a, that's a good point, mate. Because when, when, when I, was in, I was in Kenya, it's like people, even though they're in poverty, they're happy. Like they're like content. Like they have their little food for the day. They're talking to you. They're smiling. You're asking, you, how you doing? Like, I'm good, man. Like, I have, I'm, I'm good. I have everything that I need. I have my house. I have my little tent. You know what I'm saying? I have a little small apartment. I have my family, my kids. I go to work. Like, I'm good. Right, but for us, we're like, yo, this guy's living a rough. Like, I can't do this. But for them, like, even through poverty, they're content. Like, they're happy and they're relaxed too. And like, Calm. they're less less stressed. Their skin looks better. And mm. it's interesting because then you look and you're thinking, now if you were to give some of these people like how work they work this hard to do this, they do that. There's more opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just requires opportunity because mm -hmm. they have the hard work. Yeah. They have the ability to sacrifice. They have mm -hmm. the ability to do everything. Yeah. They're also very intelligent. Yeah. Sometimes I'll you ever see the. My, my dad was, we watched the same video right the guy hops on a bike mm -hmm. with a basket of like 50 plus loaves of bread yeah hops on a bike one leg middle of traffic of everyone walking mm -hmm. hops on it one time and he starts pedaling and i'm thinking like the core strength the balance this such a like a niche yeah, scale yeah. like tell me he couldn't do so many other things in life he's able to do something that looks so difficult and challenging you know that what's crazy about that when, <laughs> when i was in kenya there's a culture where the woman, when they will carry like uh, groceries or stuff or like like things, mm -hmm. they put it on a bucket and they put it on their head, mm -hmm. and they're just walking casual, like, just walking with a bucket like <laughs> of stuff, like of a lot of things and on their like, head, swaying. And, yeah, even. they're walking like like a normal day. I'm like, yo, I would have dropped everything in that bucket. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're right. They're very they're very hardworking man. They're very dedicated, and they're very um, they're very uh, loving. You know, like poor people generally speaking, or people that are, are in poverty, especially like back home. They're very generous. I feel like they understand the essence of like having to help others or helping others in need, right? So it's like they're always giving and yeah, man. Subhanallah, it's deep, it's deep what you said. It's deep yeah. about just all those things, man. No, it's awesome though that I kind of related that with travel so and everything. But I kind of want to get into talking a little bit about like your reasonings and like into also having Islam in your life and like what kind of got you into obviously like studying Quran and like okay. doing all those things I would love to yeah. learn a little bit about that okay so uh, Alhamdulillah uh, I grew up in a, in a practicing household uh, my dad growing up he studied Islamic University in Pakistan shockingly he studied in Pakistan my mom grew up in, a, in an environment where 
she was she was pushed to, to study the dean right uh my grandmother was very strict on that like mm-hmm. go and go learn mm-hmm. like go study right so i grew up in the islamic uh alhamdulillah an islamic household where i grew up going to the masjid right going to going to going to quran classes um so growing up i was exposed to that islamic environment you know what i'm saying go to the masjid quran classes going to lectures So growing up was kind of like embodied in my lifestyle. Alhamdulillah, I, th- I thank my parents for it. But uh, I still had the youth experience. Like I wasn't someone who was shielded at home. Like yeah. I didn't go to school. I didn't have friends. I didn't know what's going on. No, like I I had the normal youth experience. But with with uh, with also the environment of being Islamic um, household, you know. So yeah, I grew up learning the Deen. Uh, I grew up learning Quran at a young age. Went to Quran class, and it's it's. It's actually in the Somali culture, like from young you go to Quran class. It's called Duxi, mm-hmm. right? I, I was studying in the car, right? Yeah. Duxi. So, even though it's part of it's part of the Deen to learn Quran, it's part of in our Somali culture that when the kid becomes like six, seven, okay, put him in Duxi. Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he's in Quran class. Go back home, even the West, America, Canada, right? They found Europe. a way to put you in Duxi. Yeah, so always, <laughs> yeah, you're Somali, you're always gonna be in a Duxi. That's how it is. Until like you, you get a bit older, like you're eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and that's when you kind of like grown up and kind of do your own thing. But normally, from from when you're young to like high school times, you're you're going to Duxi regardless. Mm-hmm. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Like you're going to school. Are you going to see everything I, else comes after? I saw something that was like I don't know if it was like a meme or a joke because obviously I don't know too much about like the Somali culture, hundred yeah. percent. But it was like so Somali parents are the same way as like Asian parents are with like math and engineering and be a doctor or a lawyer with the Quran. Yeah, that's how, that's how they are. <laughs> like like you have to like you have the Quran. Like if you go back home to Somalia, even someone who you'll see them who's not really practicing the Deen or from the outside he he, he doesn't look like he embodies Islamic values. You thought, yeah, man, I finished the Quran when I was like 15, 16. Like, I went to Duxi my whole life. So even guys, like, <laughs> you see, like, guys who are not practicing or guys who, like, who fell off the deen, right? You, you, if you ask them, have you been Duxi? Yeah, man, I've been Duxi my whole life. Like, I grew up going to Quran classes from until I was like Like, 15, recite 16. this surah. He'd be like, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <laughs> Bro, like, you, you might see a random guy, Somali guy, right? Who you not think, this guy is not a sheikh or he's not a practicing guy. And he might have the most banging voice, like oh wow, like I don't think you have that. And like he actually knows like Almer, like knows the what to do. Yeah, like he like he knows basics because he grew up going to Duxi Madrasa, so that's part of our Somali culture. So I kind of had that growing up where I've been to that. Uh, of course, at home before I went to Duxi, my dad he used to teach me in the house. Mm-hmm. So I learned Quran at home and stuff on the weekends after Fajr in the morning. He would teach me, and my mom may Allah bless her. She kind of like should always instill with me Islamic values. Like everywhere I went, like. My mom is a queen of giving lectures. Like my <laughs> my mom is a teacher. You know what I'm saying? She's she's a teacher by like profession. You know. Mm-hmm. So every time, like she always give me advice. Okay, do this right. Make sure you're doing this. And when you're young, I'll be honest, you don't appreciate it, man. You don't. Like, oh man, like why am I getting a lecture, man? Like like mama, bubba, come on. Like, yeah, you're tired right of it. Like <laughs> 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And after a while, like you, you won't realize it, but subconsciously, it it, it affects you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you go on the real world. And you will like understand, okay, why my mom was saying A, B, and C, and D? Why am I doing A, B, and C, and D? Like for example, my mom every time will be driving on the road, and we'll see like a Muslim woman, like she'll be walking. She always park up, say, "Do you need a ride somewhere? Like, are you going somewhere? Like, I can take you." And she, oh yeah, I need to go here. And then I'll then she'll go pick her up. Mm-hmm. So now when I'm driving on the road, I'll see like a Somali guy or like a Muslim guy or an older guy walking. I'll say, "Akhir salam alaikum." Like, are you going somewhere? Can I drive you? Yeah, I'm going right here, and then he'll either say no, it's right here, or like yeah, I need a ride to go somewhere, you know. So those are, those stuff like you just seen it growing up, and she'll tell you like make sure you always like help others in need, right? Always give charity. Like my mom, Allah bless, she was very big on helping others, right? So giving charity, sending money back home to family back home, right? Making sure that people around you are are comfortable. So those things growing up, like you just see it right from from their character, but also like just constant reminders. Because when you're young, you you make lots of mistakes, right? Yeah, you're naturally. Youth, yeah, you're like the those teenage years. You're rowdy, like you feel like you you know everything. You're on top of the world, like like nothing can touch you. Yeah, you're invincible. Like, yep. you're like mom, you're old. Like I'm young. I know what's going on. I have social media, my phone. Like I'm tapped in. You're literally tapped out. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're always like advising me. It makes you doing this lectures, right? There's times where like I hated it, man. I'll be honest. There's times where I'm just had, I'm sitting down, like oh man, like. I just asked one little question yeah. and now, or I made one joke. Now I, that was the worst one. That's the worst you one. You made a little joke. Yeah, and when, then when, hour, when you, when you try to be funny, we try to be funny, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you catch you in a lecture. That's the worst one. Man, I'm telling you. So after a while, growing up, 
So uh, I really appreciate it. But yeah, alhamdulillah. So she would always instill me those kind of like advices and stuff like that. And she always pushed me to, to be in the masjid. She was very adamant, like, yo, you have to be in the masjid, for, especially for Fajr and like Isha time. Because the, the other time I'll be in school, like the other hours of the day. Mm-hmm. But she would always say, make sure you're in the masjid for Fajr, like, you can't miss it. Because the hadith of the Prophet, he said that whoever prays Fajr in congregation, he's under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, right? So nothing can harm you if you pray in congregation. So my mom was like, you have to pray in congregation, right? And those days where I missed it, she, <laughs> she would tell me, since you prayed at home, you are not under Allah's protection anymore. So now it's just me and you now. Like, <laughs> yeah, so she make me clean the house and like she'll punish me saying, yeah, like, Allah can save you now, you know what I'm saying? Like, as a joke, kind of. But she was pushing me, like, make sure in the masjid, right? Quran, Quran class, make sure you're always in the front row, right? Always, always try to be on your best behavior. She was very big on mannerisms, on like how to deal with others. Like, it's funny, in school, I always had good marks, alhamdulillah, like I studied, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because I have older siblings and they had good marks. So by default. That's happened to me. My sister was top of her yeah, class. Yeah, so by I had default, I had to get good marks. Like I had no choice, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had no room to slack off. So I used to grind, like put on work and study. So I had good marks. But on the report cards, it has those, um, those, those, the those, behavior ones? Those learning skills. Yeah, those learning skills. So my mom, she'll look at the marks, like, okay, my 80, 90, marks, my marks, then she'll go, boom, the learning skills. Right, it'll be like initiative, self control, right, working in groups, like those things distracts like, others. Yeah. <laughs> so me, the the hard part was um, self control because I used to talk a lot in class, uh, same kind way. Of jokes in class. Like yep. I'll get good marks, but bro, I'll be like staying down, chilling, like homies <laughs> eating snacks in class. That was me. I was more of a laid, laid back individual, you know. Mm-hmm. So she would see that, and everything would be e e e e excellent, excellent, excellent. Then I'll just say S satisfactory it's not even bad by the way it's, it's not like, even it's bad satisfactory <laughs> Keep the, it's satisfactory <laughs> and she will be on that like why are you like you don't have self-control like why are you doing this so then it'll come time to parent teacher meeting so now my mom's oh always there oh my they're, and and they're, they're asking them to tell them what's wrong with you so my mom will come and she'll and, <laughs> and, and the teacher says mashallah adam is a very good student like he doesn't work in class and he's he's getting good marks but and she's like ah oh, but like okay what's hey, this what's the but but, <laughs> but he talks so much in class and that's what she gets me. Oh man! So now I'm like, why are you talking in class? Why are you disturbing other students? Other students have, you know, their parents pay fees, and I'm getting like, I'm like, oh yeah, like a oh, mom, like I got ninety, like on math, I'm getting eighty five, like I'm, I'm saying, good. Like, I'm doing good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you should be happy. She not like so. She was big on on mannerisms, and it was important because now looking at it, it's like your akhlaq is the most thing important to you, especially in Islam. Mm-hmm. In the hadith, the prophet, the prophet, he said that's that. True. That I was sent to perfect behavior, right? I was sent to per, uh, to to perfect mannerisms. That mannerisms is a very vital thing in our religion of Islam. Mm-hmm. So just looking back at that, I'm like, it taught me that yes, Marx is important. Getting nine is important. It's good. It's good for you, right? But what stays with you and what's part of you and what's your Islamic uh, embodiment is your mannerisms. Yeah, how you do with others, right? The marks are good. Like now, if you told me to go do grade twelve calculus, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna fail. Yeah, but what I'm not stuck doing with well. me is my, how I behave, right? Mm-hmm. So that taught me like behave is important. You know what I'm saying you have to learn how how to behave as a Muslim, how to have how to embody good etiquette, right? Mm-hmm. And a big part of the Prophet Salam's life, right, or Islam, is how the Prophet behaved. There's many a hadith where someone will come, right, a Bedouin, and he'll do something outrageous. And the Sahaba would be like, yo, oh, Messenger of Allah, what's going on? Yeah. And the Prophet would show like a behavior, like how, how, how he dealt with him. For example, this hadith where a young man came to Prophet Sallam and he so said, Sam. oh, Messenger of Allah, allow me to commit zina, right? And the Sahaba was like, yo, what is this guy talking like, about? Like, what's he on? Like, he's like that's crazy. Like, yeah. like, I would say that to my dad yeah. or a sheikh. This so is Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm Messenger of Allah. Yeah. So they're like, this guy, like, is he okay? Like, like does he know who he's talking to? And the Prophet said, okay, guys, relax. Like, so he asked him, like, would you like that done to your mother, to your sister? And then he put his hand on his chest and he made dua for the young individual. And the guy said, before I came to the message of Allah, to, to the Prophet, that was the only thing that was on my mind. And when I left, it was, it was the thing that was most hated to me, right? So it just shows you how the message of Allah dealt with situations, right? This, I can go on like for that, hours, and that's, and that's like next level too. Like yeah. there was one I remember of uh, someone walked in and was yelling while the prophet was peace be upon him was speaking, mm-hmm. speaking. He's okay. in the congregation, and some guy comes in interrupting him, yelling, "Hey, I want your attention!" Like, mm-hmm. sick, yeah, like but, that. But this is the prophet we're talking yeah, about, yeah. not like to someone that you need to get your attention. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. This is like he's mid conversation too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then 
the, all the kids at the top were like, oh my God, like what's he about to, like that's crazy, like you're bugging. But then after he finished, then he goes, and you asked, and what your question was? Uh, mm-hmm. And then it's that level of like you said that mm-hmm. akhlaq. And for example, because like if that would happen to like if that if something crazy happened to an individual, we'd be like, yo, why is this guy moving crazy around me? Why is he like, what's all this bad attitude? You know. Mm-hmm. But for example, an, an, another hadith, it's, this is this, this is a very famous one mm-hmm. where the guy, a man came to the to the, to the Prophet's masjid and he started urinating in the masjid, mm-hmm. in the corner of the masjid, and so I was like, what's going on? Yeah. The Prophet said, what? Just let him finish. You know, like the guy's in the middle of using the bathroom. Let him do his business first. Then, because since the mosque it was it was sand, so they, they were able to like clean it up, right? Mm-hmm. So it just showed how. And then the pastor he went and he advised him that this is not a place where you're in. This is the house of Allah where you come and you pray, etc., 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 etc. But it showed how like something that crazy if that were to happen, right? Or something of that stature of that you know same kind of craziness were to occur, people be like, "Ahi, what's wrong with you? Don't fight him. Ahi, get out of the masjid. Don't come here." Mm-hmm. So how Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he understood that some people don't know. Some people just don't understand certain concepts. Some people weren't exposed to different environments. So he dealt with them according to their mentality and kindness and mercy. It said in the in so in the Quran, I think it's Surah Yunus where uh where Allah says uh uh what is that? That he was, he was very merciful to the believers, right? That he was not sent except for a mercy to mankind. So it shows you how being good to others is a very, very vital in the life of a Muslim, right? Mm-hmm. So, so my mom was very big on that. On okay, make sure your mannerisms are good. Yeah. Everywhere I go, like so, being young, like so, sometimes you would you would talk to your parents, and then they'll see something that is wrong. Like, oh, no, mom, you're wrong. Like, you're talking back to them, and then they get mad because you're talking back. And they tell you, listen, don't talk back to your parents. Don't talk back to anybody. So it's like, she used to teach me how to behave in front of others. So now when I see someone do something crazy, I'm like, yo, man, chill. Like, maybe he doesn't know. Like, don't always jump the gun to kind of like admonish him. You know what I'm saying? Or like, because you never know their 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 reality, their perception of what they're doing might seem like this is normal. This is cool. exactly. You don't know. For example, like when I said I was in Kenya, so a lot of the times the people there. Culturally, like they're more blunt, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? They're more blunt. So, for example, someone might come see you for the first time, right? For the first time, and like they'll, they'll just roast you, like, tell you, like as culturally, like, oh, what happened to you? Like, your hair's falling off, like, yo, what? like, are you, str-? you know what I'm saying? Like, as a joke, I'm saying it's, 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 it's hard to ch- translate to English, but yeah. in your language, you understand, they'll come and they'll roast you, like, like why this guy roast me like this, like, you know what I'm saying? Or like, what I do, <laughs> yeah, like, or, 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 or someone will, will deal with you in a rough way. It's like, yeah, why is this guy doing rough? But he he doesn't know better. You know what I'm saying? That's how, just how you grew up. That's mm-hmm. how his environment. So you, as a Muslim, have to know how to be patient with others. How no matter what situation. No matter what situation. Yeah, be patient with them. You know what I'm saying? They probably don't understand. Don't don't let people like walk over you and, and be rude to you or like disrespect you. Right? Of course, be assertive. Stand your ground. Be confident as a Muslim. But don't always be the one to kind of fight things, right? right? Be patient with them. Understand. Talk to them in a peaceful manner, right? So that's how I kind of grew up learning mannerisms. Um, I would have topic right now, but yeah. So, so in high school, my mom would just focus on on the mannerisms, right? So I grew up in Alhamdulillah in a, an Islamic uh, household. Uh, I, st- I, st- I, st- I studied the Deen of Islam, went to different classes, right? Uh, learned different books. Uh, was strong in the Quran, like learning the Quran and stuff. And I kind of started to love it growing up because mm-hmm. when you're younger, you're more like you're pushed to do it. Then when you grow older, like you start enjoying it, you appreciate more, like you the appreciate work, it yeah. more and more and more and more. You know, so yeah, that's kind of a little a background. I don't know where I went. I went or I no, went no, around. I love it because it was funny. I wasn't even say like I remember when I was younger. My like I remember living in New York, and I was I think I was in first first grade, and I was writing something like a paper or something. Yeah. You write, like, a, like a piece of paper we write about whatever essay that the teacher yeah. gave that day, and I'm writing in it, and I got it back. And mm. it just said inel- ineligible chicken scratch, like a chicken scratch. Yeah. Uh, basically, he just didn't care, right? Mm. My, I'll never forget. It was Valentine's Day. I don't mm. know. I remember walking to a store and seeing everything Valentine's Day. Yeah. It wa- my mom's holding me my wrist, like because we were in New York, so tight the entire time, like mm-hmm. so tight enough where I'm like, she's so angry, but yeah. she's like not gonna do something in public, like mm-hmm. mad at me. But she's like, when you go home, you'll see. When you go home, you'll yeah, see, yeah, right? Because, yeah, yeah. and then she's like, the teacher telling me, you're right, chicken scratch, chicken scratch. Like yeah. she's like. How like that's to this day I have like the best handwriting in my family mm-hmm. hands down like I, I have bad handwriting I, 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 every letter I write per, like, one by one one by one like yeah. I write like very like 
not small, but like mi- like literally the size of like Times New Roman, like on mm. the paper, it'll fit exactly yeah. in the lines. Just to that from that day, like kind of traumatic because yeah. it taught me. Like in hindsight, I look back on like that made me way better as just a writer, just mm-hmm. to be able to make sure my all my stuff is le- eligible. Yeah. Then when I got to like like you said, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, I'm cracking jokes. I'm never shutting up. Yeah. Like I'm yapping, yapping to yeah. all my teachers, friends. I'm cra- like you said, like class clown, but also like yeah. I'm bored because mm-hmm. all A's, all A's, everything to all sure honors. Like, and I didn't study once. I was just able to do it. Like mm-hmm. I said, my sister was super, super smart at school, so I had to at least do somewhat good. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right. So like. I knew how to do the game, but I never studied. She would study. I never did. And I'll get a little lower marks than she would. Mm-hmm. And then they, my mom and I couldn't be mad. But the one thing that my dad, like you said, it sits with you is he said, I would rather you be stupid, mm-hmm. but well, well-mannered well than intelligent and disrespectful. True. He was like, stop talking back to teachers. Stop interrupting them. Mm-hmm. Stop doing this. He's like, because you said like the marks, instead of getting like E's or S's we got um, in uh, elementary school. Fours, threes, twos, and ones. Oh, it's like a number system. So fours is excellent. Three okay. is good. Two is eh, needs yeah. work, and one is like he just he's just cook, he's terrible. Mm. Cook, he's cooked, mm. right? Yeah. Fours and everything, math, reading, mm. threes and fours, threes and fours. Then you get to the behavior part. <laughs> Distracts others. Two self control. One. Yeah. Uh, something. Uh, talks in class. One interrupts. One. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh no! Like I, I would see it first, yeah. and I'm like, my dad's gonna kill me. But then again, <laughs> he told me that one that line, and it's, to this day, it stuck with me. Obviously, in hindsight, you look back and like, wow, like that was such a wise thing to tell me. Like, mm-hmm. like I would rather you be stupid, like literally yeah. just a dumb idiot, yeah, but respectful mm-hmm. than it's super intelligent but rude to everyone so it's interesting that like even akhlet and like in our cultures, it does teach us like, yo, it's not just the deen, but in our cultures, like there's a level of mannerisms that you need yeah, to man, have yeah man about culture like it's funny because the whole western culture like you see on TV shows how like kids would be rude to their parents oh, you know what I'm God. saying <laughs> like kids would be like shut up mom yeah like mom like I don't do that like like you have to like oh like give me my privacy like what is he talking about right now you know it's kind of things like my dad would kick the door <laughs> yeah like you know, privacy or, 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 like, tell mom, like, oh, leave me alone I don't want to talk to you so you see on TV <laughs> and then you actually like like our cultures we're big on on respect like mm-hmm. that's huge of course, like I'm um, like Somali culture is a lot of it is Islam rooted, mm-hmm. it's rooted in Islam, but even like culturally wise, it's respect is important. Mm-hmm. Like if someone is not your parents, you have to like if they if they're older than you, like if they're like someone's older, you respect them. Like they're your uncle. Like in Somali, we call everyone a or uncle. Like Amu, mm-hmm. Amu, yeah, yeah, Amu, example, Amu, whatever the the it may be. So it's like they're they're like your parents in a sense where like if you see them in the mosque or in the street, or whatever. You treat them with respect. You know, what I'm saying, "I'm how you doing?" Or if you're if, if you're sitting and you're standing, oh, come sit, right? How can I help you? You know what I'm saying? So back home, the culture is like the the community raises you. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you do something stupid, right? And someone, and someone you. sees you, they're like, "What are you doing?" They'll smack you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like and it's then, your kid. Like yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like my kid. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Yo, don't, don't, don't do anything crazy like around. You know? So it teaches like respect for others, especially your elders, like your parents. Like if your parent calls you, like you have to be there. Like your parent, like I'll do everything for them. Mm-hmm. They're, they're your father. You know what I'm saying? Like you, if they speak, you listen to them. You obey them, and that's big in Islam, mm-hmm. huge. Where Allah says in the Quran, Surah Asr, He says, "Wa rabbuka alla ta'abudu illa iyahu wa bilwalidin ihsana." He says that your Lord has prescribed for you that you worship Him, that you do not associate any partners with Him, mm-hmm. right, and that you're good to your parents. So he associated, right, Tawheed, meaning singling out Allah, right next to it with being good to your parents. You know what I'm saying? Even to like the that's po- how highly respected that's it highly, needs to be. Exactly. And one of the major sins actually is being bad to your parents, right? And the and the status of the parents in Islam is huge. Mm-hmm. It's huge where if your parent tells you to do something, of course that's not against Islam, you must obey them, regardless. And also like for example, if somebody's a revert, Right, they're converted to Islam. They may be like, my parents not even Muslim anymore. Why do I have to listen to them? No, you have to, regardless. As a Muslim, it's still your mother. It's like, still your mother. Still you, like. your mother. Islam it says in Surah Luqman, it says that that uh, you obey them, but if if they tell you to do something that's against Islam, right? Do not obey them, but be their companion in this life. Like be good to them, right? Be with them always. Mm-hmm. But if they tell you to do something haram. Don't listen to it Say listen I can't do that If your mom tells you Oh come eat pork There's pork for breakfast Or bacon for breakfast And you're Muslim Yeah like, Yeah I can't eat this I'm sorry Like I can't do that It's against my religion But 
it doesn't shy away from the fact where I have to be good to them regardless. If mm-hmm. they call me, I'm there. They needed me, I'm at their assistance. So now the Western culture is kind of the opposite. I'm 18, yeah, I'm getting out of the house. I don't want nothing to do with my parents, right? I'm trying to be as far away from them. And sometimes it's the parent them. sometimes it's the parent kicking them out at yeah. 18. I'm like So they're like, yo, I'm only go- gonna go visit my parents what well, Christmas time or Easter or like spring break holidays or like or like you don't even call your parents and say, Oh hi, how, how you doing? Right? How's mm-hmm. everything? How you feeling? So Islam is very big on being very good to your parents, right? And and they are they are your gateway to paradise. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're your gateway to paradise. And the dua of the parents are accepted. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want your parents to curse you. You yeah. want them to dua for you. You want, you want them on your side. Yeah. On your side. You Anytime saying? I make my mom upset, she like she'll say like in Arabic like shadai shadai like like yeah. she, I'm not gonna pray for you. I'm like yo. Like I'll be upset like mom. Like, it's not what I meant or this. Yeah, like, yeah, obviously yeah. naturally you're gonna have yeah, like yeah. conversations and then like I'll sit there for a second and be like, nah, it's time out, time out. Like, now nah, we're not going to do that. Yeah, like, I, I need that, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, my mom, my mom, my mom, every time she would, she would get mad, she would say in Arabic, uh, Allah irda alik. Maybe I, so growing up, I thought it was, I thought it was a curse. So, <laughs> so, so, it means, so it means, like, may Allah be happy with you, right? So growing up, I thought, like, if I heard that, like, oh, I'm sorry, please don't say that. I was telling her, don't say it, please, like, don't say that, because that means she was mad, mm-hmm. you know? But I didn't know she was making dua for me, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So growing up, like she like she would say like Allah is like Allah is like like may Allah help your affairs. They're saying it like in a mad way. They're mad <laughs> saying it. So I'm like, oh, you please don't. But it's good because if the if the dua is accepted, then of course I'm gonna be upright. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what's funny about the parents is is like there's a there's a, a hadith that says that the happiness of the par- the the happiness of Allah. It's with the happiness of the parents And the anger of Allah Is with the anger of your parents Meaning if your parents Are angry with you Then Allah is angry with you If your parents are happy And pleased with you Then Allah is happy And pleased with you So I was telling you that day Like those times were like I want to go play ball outside I want to go mm-hmm. And they're like don't go I'm like oh yeah I want to go Please like, Hang out with go. the friends yeah. Chill and vibe. And then like I would ask so much Until like she says oh, Okay just go Like I don't, I don't care Just go Every time that happened to me Something bad happened to me Oh, or like you played bad, or it wasn't even fun. Yeah, Someone like didn't come every play. time I went outside and I, I was playing basketball, and my mother wasn't like too happy with me going that day. I got injured. I roll my ankle. I would play ball, jam my finger. So I've been kind of like, oh man, like I should have stayed home. Like, yo, I mean, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? To the point now, like if she says, yo, don't go somewhere, and I try to force it, and she says, no, I don't want you to go, I say, yeah, I ain't going, man. Like, I know. It's not worth it's the not worth, anxiety. It's not worth anxiety. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not worth anxiety. I'm just going to stay home, and like, you know, call my friends and listen, yeah, I'm not going out today. I'm staying home today. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow, or something like that. I just, I just don't. I, I it's so you. funny you say yeah, that because yeah. literally for me, like, <laughs> Something like that had happened. And this is, again, like when I became... Because obviously you're saying like when you're younger, you don't appreciate those lessons and life mm-hmm. values. Yeah. But the older you get and the more like you really start accepting the deen. Because like, mm-hmm. obviously like when you're 15, like what do you really know? Like yeah. you, you, even like people who are if it's a Quran by 15, yeah. 14, 13, right? And then you're they still a youth. You're, you need life experience to kind of teach you as yeah, to why yeah. these words matter. Mm-hmm. And they have value and weight. Mm-hmm. And when I got into college, obviously I go to university and... I'm the only Muslim really at my school. Mashallah. And then I'm on, on a team, I'm playing, I'm there, and I'm seeing the ways of life. And this yeah. is the first time I'm really seeing how people live life in America. Mm-hmm. And I never was exposed to it because I always tell people this. I would go to school in high school, right, in America, mm-hmm. right? But when I came home, I was in Egypt. Mm-hmm. I went home, I went to school in America, but I came home in Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Because what was I eating when I came home? I was eating bamia, rosetta, mm-hmm. all these What's cultural the, dishes. Uh, Kushari, right? Yeah. Yeah, all these Kushari, Egyptian dishes, you're eating this, grilled fish on this, on here, yeah. the styles. And then I'm speaking Arabic. And you said, like, Quran class on a Friday. Oh, yeah. so, so to go, you go to Friday prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, we have to pray this time, this time. This time. Okay, mm-hmm. so I'm doing all these things that no one around me was doing. So you kind of live in these two different worlds. So mm-hmm. you don't understand until you, again, keep growing and growing and saying, okay, who am I? Mm-hmm. So I'm at, I'm at this university and I'm thinking, okay, like, let me live the way they live in. Like, mm-hmm. Let me go out, party with them. Yeah. Do this, that. And wallahi, like, because like I was on a team and doing this or anytime I did something that I knew I knew I was guilty or I knew I did something stupid, yeah. wallahi, like I would get like like a tweak in practice or this yeah. or, oh, this happened and this happened. I'm like, dang. I'm like, I'm like, this is all me. And I would always tell people, I'm like, no, nah, it's all me. But then I would... I would think I'm like okay but they're doing whatever they want they're not getting mm-hmm. hurt mm-hmm. but later down the line when I learned that that means Allah has given them this world mm-hmm. because they chose this world they can have it yeah, like, you know, it's like they can have it, and enjoy their fill of it, mm-hmm. because it doesn't matter because this world is temporary. And when I started understanding that in like an Islamic mindset, I started accepting 
the the trials, the struggles, or mm. understanding that I might not get that thing that they have right now that in the immediate, but I can delay my gratification yep. for akhirah or yeah. delay my gratification just a year or two mm-hmm. for what Allah has prepared for me. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's all these deep, little things deep. that you don't realize until you grow up. Because like you said, deep. like that's why it's like, oh, listen to your parents and your elders. Why? Because they've been through life. That's what I'm saying. I, I was telling the other day in the masjid, I was saying that that there's th- there's no better teacher than experience. You know, mm-hmm. like even even like people who go to university and you learn theory, you come to the workforce like yo, what am I doing right now? Like I don't know any of this stuff. You learn it on the job. Yeah, you learn on the you learn on the job, right? So the four years of degree, right? For 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 most uh for most degrees, like it's kind of useless because like mm-hmm. everything I learned, I'm barely even applying what I learned. I was studying all that for what? Now I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a world where it's a whole different system. Mm-hmm. Now I have to learn a whole new system again. Mm-hmm. So your parents, they see in life, right? They may not know every intricate detail that's happening right now in the world, but they know life life more than you enough to give you advice that you are in need of. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They've seen life. Like, They've been through experiences enough. Oh, like people forget that. Oh, I, we, I've had my heart broken too, Habibi. <laughs> it's funny because like, like, we, we look at, it's like we have this thing where we look at our parents as if like, they're angels. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like, oh, my parents. Like, the superheroes. Angels, you know, it's like super, the superheroes. superheroes. Yeah. So you forget that there were once youth. They once had feelings and emotions. They once wanted to do A, B, and C, and D. Right? So they went through it and they kind of know, okay, how did I navigate it? Right? How did I experience life? How did I face my fears? Right? For example, a big one. Right? Getting married nowadays. Right? Your parents probably back then getting married for them mm-hmm. was a whole different story than getting us trying to get married now, for example. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, you ask them, okay, like, how do you deal with, right, with love? Right, how do you deal with someone that you're attracted to? How do you kind of go around it? Right, or for example, um, going to school, right, or environment. So they can. It might have been a different setting, but it's like it's, it's like a Venn diagram. You know a Venn diagram mm-hmm. where like you have two big circles and then yeah, you have a circle in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. kind of like that. Like of course they they had different lives, but ultimately it comes down to one middle thing where like. And honestly, the middle for that is bigger than the sides. Yeah, it's like one big thing. So like those experiences are because they live such a long life and they have done so many things, they have the ability to, to kind of keep you on that straight path. You know what I'm saying? Of course, every day, people are learning. Like, every day we're learning. Even at your, your, your old age, like like your dad, for example. Like, the first time you got an iPhone, he's like, has a glasses load. Like, uh, Ali, come, how do you... How do you Yo, you'd be surprised. You know, what he does, you know what he does now? He'd be screaming to the TV by yeah. himself. He'd be taking it from me. I'm like... Yeah, because I remember like, my mom, the first time like, she got an iPhone, I said, okay, this is how you send... This is how you airdrop, right? This is how you can take a screenshot, FaceTime, right? How to add... Some things like, yo, I do this stuff. Now, like, she has an iPad, she has a MacBook, now she's, like, doing her own <laughs> thing, you know what I'm saying? So, every day you're learning. So, for them, even though they might not know, like, the intricate details of, like, society right now, small things, they will learn it, right? Because mm-hmm. they're in that society, yeah. right? You might know, like, something that they probably haven't experienced, right? But generally speaking, in life, they know way more than you. Mm-hmm. To the point where you can't even compare, yeah. you know what I'm saying? In, ev- in every facet of life, business, uh, health, mental health. They've just been through more experiences. They've been through more experience in life to be able to teach you, okay, this is how you do A, B, and C, and D, right? Or for a mother, this is how you become a good woman. Do mm-hmm. that. For a father, this is how you become a man. A, B, C, D. I was you know just, th- I was. It's so funny because there's two things I was just thinking of. One, I was just thinking of like my mother and father were talking about like how long they've been together, talking. Yeah. And when they said the the number of years, I was looking at them like how? No, but like I was like I'm not even that old. Mm. So then I was thinking, y'all have been at it like this for longer than I was even alive. Yeah. But then. When did I gain consciousness? And then when did I low key become like someone who would like sound mind? You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. obviously you're twelve. Like yeah, what do you really know? Exactly. Like you know stuff. You're smart, but you don't know things. Mm-hmm, yeah. So then I was thinking like so that means like last ten years, five years. I'm like oh I've become so smart in the last couple of years. I'm so hardworking now. Yeah. Then I'm like they've been doing this for how long? Forty you know, fifty years. So you're thinking like you know, you know what I mean? You're thinking like oh like mm. I'm Mister this big shot. You yeah. know? Like, but they're like wait hold up you have been on this you've been doing this and then even then my friend said this to me once and it stuck with me he was mm. like dude this is the first year my mom's been 45 this is the first year my mom's been 46 then i was thinking about that and i was like what do you mean like first like uh, it's her first time being however old she is mm, it's her first time mm-hmm. being this age as well mm. this experience as well yeah it's her first time having a kid mm-hmm. it's her first time having a kid go to college mm-hmm. she is going to that first time experience the same way it's your first time experience mm-hmm. rather it be different name i have experiences that can prepare them for that mm-hmm. but it's still like a first time experience for them yeah, So it's yeah, like yeah. The life journey of growth mm-hmm. Literally never stops Yeah that's true You're always You're always learning It doesn't matter what age you are You're always learning Something about life Or you're always benefiting Or you're always growing As an individual It doesn't matter Where you are in the world 
that's how, that's how it is. Like people back home where they're in the they're in the forest, mm-hmm. they're learning, right? They're developing, they're finding different systems of finding food or irrigating water. Like technology. So like there's always a growth in your life, mm-hmm. no matter what age you are. Like like like, like I, I was saying before, of course, because of the society difference, we may we may be more intact with what's going on in some things, mm-hmm. right? So generally speaking, we might know one thing, a couple of things more than them in terms of like how things work or the, the newer intricacies of, of the environment. Or the internet, the technology, yeah. the, the, the state of the world, where yeah. it's going, what the, what the metaverse is, yeah, or AI like or VI. Exactly, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? But generally speaking, from a broader life, uh, life perspective, from a broader perspective, they know a lot more than you. Mm-hmm. They've seen, right? And that's where it comes where you have to complement one another. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because sometimes the issues we have is the child, because he thinks I know one, two, three things that they don't know, that I can big up my chest, like, you know what? Now, nah, like, I'm doing my own, like, I don't need your advice. I don't need your help. Like, I can do it on my own. Mm-hmm. When rather it should be complimentary. You take the life experiences, you add your knowledge of, of the daily life that you're in the environment, and you kind of find a, a good mix together. Mm-hmm. Instead, of, instead of saying, you know what? Now, nah, I don't want what you're saying. I don't need what you're saying. I'm gonna do my own thing. I don't need you. You 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 don't know me, right? I'm own human being. I know myself. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the kind of life we live in, mm-hmm. right? And and you always hear a lot of the times where, like, for example, in marriage, where they say, "Oh, are you gonna find your own spouse, or are you gonna let your parents help you find?" Right? Mm-hmm. Somebody says, "No, nah, I'm gonna marry the one that I love. Like, I'm gonna find it myself. Like, I don't want my parents being involved." And like, no problem. It's fine. Okay, mm-hmm. it was like. Don't shy away from your parents being married 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. And not think and not there's think a reason. There's a reason why th- their marriage lasts that long. Like, they probably know someone. Like, my mom, for example, she's very good at matchmaking stuff. So, she, she does with a lot of people, right? So, she can, she, so she knows, like, characteristics. And personalities. And, and, personality and what will work out. Like, in the moment when you're dealing with someone that you like, right? It's the whole, like, energy. Oh, my God. Like, the whole love mm-hmm. and, and lust. And, and like, so, so, like, you feel like... Oh my God, he's the one. Yeah. Oh my God, she's the one. Like I can't live without this person. But like the parents, like they've been through a lot, so they know. Okay, what characteristics, what personality traits, even though in the moment it might not be present, but after a while, these two will not last together. You know what I'm saying? It's like the flame could be hot at first, but it'll die it'll out. Die down. So it versus so like a nice slow fire. That exactly. Just so parents, right? I'm not saying that they they know everything, but they can chime in on your life and chime in on things that you need. For your marriage, this is just an example, by the marriage example. But mm-hmm. what you need for marriage, right? Or for example, a guy who who had a business back in the day, right? Selling a store, for example, he's selling like food at a store. He kind of knows, yo, okay, like how a business works. It might be different, but he can chime in on some things that can help tweak your business and might give you an outlook that might improve what mm-hmm. you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's never good to shut off what your parents are doing. Always take the. Uh, you never know where advice can come from that can help you in your field. Like, for example, my dad doesn't do anything in tech, for example, yeah. or app development mm-hmm. or this. But he'll look at me and be like, okay, so I used, even if he didn't tell me, yes. I used what he taught me of mm. how to barter, mm. right? How to make sure you negotiate the price all the time. Mm-hmm. Always negotiate. We were, we were in Dubai. I swear, this is like such a silly story, yeah. but like we go to Dubai. And it was like a layover for like a day. Mm-hmm. So we, we see everything, you know, like stuff before we go to Egypt. And we were in like the mall, right? Like Dubai mall, right? Mm-hmm. So you're thinking lavish, la- up the lavish, right? Bougie 101. We're at like this kiosk, right? Yeah. And as he sees the person at the kiosk, he wants to buy. I, I literally think it's this actually. It's yeah. funny to buy this, right? And he, the lady tells him 200, right? Mm-hmm. For example. And my sister is not that she's the type that kind of go follow by the book a little more. But, mm. you know, just give 200. Who cares? Like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's like, nah. And, and, and the thing is, honestly, like, <laughs> I, I understand, like, my sister's side. Because sometimes yeah. it's not, is it worth the hassle yeah. of, like, my dad's like, 100. Mm-hmm. My sister's like, this is like a store. Like, imagine going to, like, a store yeah. and saying, like, here and being like, 100. They're like, look at you. Like, no, we don't barter here. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, this it's clearance, 50. Nah, I want 70. Look at you, like, all right, get out. You no, know, I'm the same way after traveling. <laughs> I'm the same. Like, I'll come here, I'll go to the store here, and like, I'll, I'll say, how much cost? 50. It's like, I can't, I can't get like 75, like, you know, it's like 45 or 40. Can, like, discount, can I get like something? Like, is there like, is there like employee discount? Is there, is, is, is there like a, I, I always make a joke. I say, yo, is there like a, a first time customer discount? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, first time come here. Mm-hmm. Like a little discount, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a sale. I'm the same way, by the way. Me, for it works. It works so much more than you realize. People will literally do go out of their way to give you like a little discount. That's too. the definition of standing on business. Standing on business. <laughs> that's what we stand on business. Bro, you learn how to not budge. Mm-hmm. Like one time, a lot. I was I was in Saudi. What was I buying, man? I was buying. I think uh, was it Saudi? Or was it Nairobi? I forget. I was in a store. I think it was Nairobi, and I was buying something, and it was like it was like thirty bucks like in in American. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm trying to bring it down to like ten dollars. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, listen, I think I think it costed like in like three thousand shillings. It's mm-hmm. equivalent to like th- thirty bucks American. Mm-hmm. So he's saying three thousand. I said, no, I can't do that. It's too much, man. Bring it down. He said, I uh, t- no, it was shoes. Stuff like is uh, it, was, it was shoes. <laughs> I think it was shoes. It was slides. It was slides. Uh. <laughs> it was slides. So I'm at the spot and it costed, th- I think. Three, th- it costed four thousand shillings, which mm-hmm. is forty dollars American. Mm-hmm. So he's like, it's four thousand shillings. I said, nah, bro, I can't do that. He said, okay, I can. The best I can do for you, three thousand eight hundred. That's like what? That's like probably like what twenty. Uh, yeah, he really didn't bucks. subtract anything. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like two dollars. Yeah. I said, nah. I said, listen, all I have in my account right now is two thousand five hundred shillings. That's all I have right now. And I kind of I had I had that in my account, but I had money on my pocket. Like I didn't I had money um, in, like with me, but in, in the account that I had, it's all I had. I said, "Listen, I have two thousand five hundred shillings. Talk to me. Listen, I'm I'm that's all I have." He said, "You know what? The best I can do for you, three thousand five hundred." I said, "Brother, listen, you had no business coming this bus quiet right now." Because <laughs> then you start gutting them. Yeah, saying, you got I'm no saying, one coming in. I said, it's quiet right now. It's quiet. There's no one here. You know what I'm saying like I'm giving you money. I'm saying this is you. You're you're making money in the last ten minutes. Cause I was there for like ten minutes. I sat down and like I'm like man. I said no. I can't do this. And I'm going back and forth with him. And I'm telling him, but listen, there's there was no one here for the last ten fifteen minutes. No one's coming. It's on like a random day, and no one's buying slides right now. It was it was, it was like a sandal shop. So no one's buying slides right now. So listen, let's let's make it three thousand. He thought about it. It was him and a friend. They're talking, they're talking, <laughs> and keep my keep as funny because they were speaking Swahili. I Me, mean, I don't know Swahili like that. I barely know Swahili, mm-hmm. right? I put the words. So what I do is normally because if you don't know the language, they think you. I can play this guy because he because he's a, he's a foreigner. So I, do, I know like ten words, fifteen words. That I just you said you said I gotta take all these words. I use, I use every word in the bag. I brought it <laughs> out. And the, the funny part is, is they speak English there. So all I had to make them be, be understand is I'm from here. Once, once I, sp- I, sp- I spit three, four words and I had like two, three last sentences, crack one, two joke, then, then they knew this guy's from here. Then I spoke English because they all know English. So he says, 3,500. I said, but I can't do that, man. That is, that is, that is too high for me. All I can afford is 2,500. He said, listen, okay, let me give you for 3,000. Just take 3,000. I said, listen, my friend. You know, th- I lied, my friend. <laughs> my friend, my brother, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> listen, my friend. I said, my friend, listen. I like you a lot. I said, you're a great individual, right? You need business. I'm giving you business. It's just me and you here. <laughs> you know I'm saying? Tell me, it's me and you here right now. I'll give you business, right? Right now, you can take this money cash, right? I, 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 and I had me cash. You can take this money cash with me right now. And you can take a walk away right now. Or I will leave. And there's no one, co- and you don't know whether anyone's coming here until you close. This is a, this is a guarantee money coming in. Whether it's not Allah, this is a guarantee money. You know what I'm saying? So he sat down here, he thought about it. I said, listen, I can go somewhere else and give some else business. But I'm coming to you because I like you a lot. You're a great individual. And I want you to make money today. So we have to. I'm like, I'm here for you. It's not about me anymore. It's about you now. It's not yeah. about me. I said, you, flip, you flip the, the whole flick switch. This is about you now. You need the money, right? You need your business to grow. So I'm here to support that. Right, he sat down, man. Talked to his friend. And I'm pressuring, I'm pressuring, I'm pressuring. He's talking, talking, talking. I said, "Listen, I'm right here in front of you. You have a customer, right?" I'm, and like it was, it was like a market. So I'm looking like this, and it's dry. Yeah, <laughs> no one there. Like, but look, no one coming. I'm right here in front of you. It's business. Then I spoke. I said, you know what? Okay, two thousand five hundred. And then put my bought Oh my god, I got out of there. I said, "Yo," and looking back, you know what I'm saying. So like. Yeah, man. Like I forgot how we. It was because talking about like the bartering and like the culture, like when you were saying like the things you learned, the life experiences, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole bar, like you're saying. Like, like, but I was saying like one point about the parents thing that I want to mention is the fact that they raised you automatically is show that they, they know more than you. Mm-hmm. They, they know you better than you know yourself. All right. They, they saw you from. That's what I was thinking with my dad when he said like thirty some years. I was like thirty. I'm like I'm not thirty. I'm like wait a minute. And then I like you know you don't think yeah. about it often. But then I was like wait a minute. Y'all know me all my life. Yeah, <laughs> like, I haven't know, know you. Bro. I haven't known you all your life. Yeah, like they really know who you are. You know what I'm saying so. To so to, so to take their consideration is very important because mm-hmm. anybody that not only know you more than yourself, 
but they love you and they want good for you. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of looking for your best interest. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Of course, they're, they're especially with matchmaking and love. Like I saw something. Mm. It was like, for example, people will always like, dude. People will take their friend's advice. People will yeah. take this person's advice, that person's advice. You're telling me you're not going to take the person who birthed your advice, like yeah, right? on 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 something so serious as like marriage or bringing someone into your family? Because like when you marry someone. You're literally putting them into your family. That's literally what you're doing. And yeah. You're combining both mm-hmm. families together. So when you do that, you're like saying, okay, this is going to be a harmonious mix because why? Okay, culturally, we, we match up, even if we're not the same exact mm-hmm. culture. Just, again, some sort of culture. Like, for example, clearly Somali and Egyptian culture have super so many similarities. They have a lot in common. More than differences. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that could work. But it might be a little different if it's a Western person with an Eastern mm-hmm. person. Cultures might not vibe yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. Even like, for example, if you marry someone back home, right? Mm-hmm. But they never grew up in the West or that. Yeah, yeah. They, that clashes. Personality might, clash. Like personality clash. There might be a lot of different jokes you both don't get or mm-hmm. different inner things. Or, yeah. It might be law. It won't be as smooth. So you mm-hmm. want someone who have kind of had similar experiences. Mm-hmm. So it's like these layers, right? Mm-hmm. But then this is the fun part where like you want your parents' help. When you start realizing you want your parents' help yeah. in the sense of, you kind of say, hey, I, I talked to this person. What do you think? Mm. Then it's where it gets nice. But the one thing I always, I always make note of is a lot of women usually talk about this, but they say things like, oh, like when it comes to like marriage and like this, it's like you want to vet yourself, right? Like say you vet like the guy yourself, right? Like, oh, he's mm. oh, he's handsome. He's mm. this. He's on his dean, blah, blah, blah. But the reason why you need brothers or I'm or someone to help you out is they know who he really is. Like yeah, yeah. guys be capped, right? Guys will all cap for a, for a woman. You know, though that's like I saw a silly quote. It was like guys tell lie, the guys tell lies to get women to fall in love, and women wear makeup because girls something what they well, see. Looks, yeah, guys like what they see. What they see. Yeah. So it's like how or you like, or like um, women look what they hear. Guys like what they see. Yeah. So that's why men tell lies mm-hmm. and women wear makeup, right? Something mm-hmm. like that. And like obviously, like at the end of the day, the number one reason why you should marry someone is because like like you said, echlet character, the garment of someone, yeah. right, to you, but. When you see it like it's like the society, right, mm-hmm. as a whole, you start to realize like your family are going to be your vetting people, like the people yeah. to vet, because who else is going to vet them and who else are you going to trust than your family? Like before, it's funny before even all those things, before even like before everything is, a lot of people don't even know themselves. Mm-hmm. Know that like a, like a yeah. lot of people don't know themselves, and because they they don't know themselves, they don't know what what they want. Put marriage aside and life in general. Mm-hmm. People once you really know it yourself. Once you really know what you like and, and the things and your values and you have that kind of identity of who you are, then you can kind of have a pathway of getting somewhere or, mm-hmm. or getting w- w- what you want to achieve. Sometimes like people because of social media or because of things you watch, like everyone's getting different ideas of what looks good or mm-hmm. what is good or what should be the standard. But no one says, you know what, what do I actually want? Mm-hmm. Who am I as an individual? Yeah. What makes me happy? Now what makes other people happy? Now what society deems as this should make you happy, what do I enjoy? What are my things that that I want for myself, right? How do I see things? So you, so the issue is like your parents raised you. Mm-hmm. So they know you. They see it in your house. They've seen what you've pajamas. liked all your life. They've, They've seen, seen how you behave. They've seen you at your high times, at your low times, the times where you're they took care of you when you're sick. Angry. Angry, mad. Everything. So they know you. So they kind of know. They have an idea of. Okay, what are things that Ali might like, mm-hmm. right? What does Ali like to have for dinner, right? What makes Ali happy, right? What excites him? What makes him angry? So they know you the best. So when they see someone, for example, back to the whole marriage thing, when they see someone and they see their personality, they're like, okay, uh, I don't think they'll be a good fit for him because A, B, and C, D. It might work out, by the way. I'm not saying it, won't. it might work out, but mm-hmm. they have like they have this lens from behind, like from behind you guys. They have like a broader vision, like okay, I know my son very well and. I was gonna work out for him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just in general in life, your parents have that experience over you and you should take what they say for a lot of things in life. Yeah. Right? For a lot of things in life. Of course your parents are not perfect. They might make a mistake. Like I said before, take their knowledge, right? Take what you know and fuse it together. The good things they take the good yeah. from the people around you, not yeah, like the bad it. or the Yeah, not the bad. Like if you know something won't work if you tried it, right? Listen to your parents. And a big thing that back to mannerisms about parents is Sometimes they want to be heard because as a parents, right, as anybody, you want to feel valued, right? Mm-hmm. And the parents, they feel value when their par- the children are listening to them, mm-hmm. right? They say, okay, you know what? That sounds nice. I appreciate that, right? Even though deep down, you know it's not going to work out, right? This is, this, this, this is wisdom right here. When your parents sometimes are telling you something or do A, B, and C, and D, right? You know that, okay, I've done that before, 
or I know that right you're talking, it doesn't work. But just for respect out of them, listen to what they have to say. Yeah. Don't cut them off. Say, okay, you know what? I'll look into it. That's a good idea. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, that happened to me with uh, Ammo one time. He was giving me advice. And the thing is, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm going to listen and be respectful. Yeah. But in my head, the whole time, I was thinking, you can take people's advice and be respectful. Yeah. But not anyone's advice you need to take. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, like, if I'm out of ihtaram and out of love for your parents, listen to them. See, well, like, mom, dad, I appreciate you telling me. I love it. Not only are you getting some benefits from what they're saying, but the love for you to increase. Because, like, my son is appreciating what I'm saying. Because parents love that. Parents love when you appreciate what they say. Mm-hmm. So I thank you. I appreciate that. Or you and bring like, up something that they said. And like, yeah. I've noticed that. I'm like, but I kind of like with, with cultural parents, they will appreciate you, but they'll roast you. Like, oh, they'll roast. I, always, I always tell you what to do, but you never listen to me. They always say that. You know what I'm saying? You never listen to what I have Yo, to say. Yo, they turned into Mr. Funny and yeah. Miss Funny, funny yeah. Lady when, when guests or someone comes over. <laughs> They're like, oh, Ali. Yeah. You know, he just took out the trash for the first time in 10 years. <laughs> I'm like, I do it every, even if you do it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why would you say that? Like, it's and just the worst part is like, you can't see now, like, <laughs> yes, babe. okay, but like, yeah. okay, well, right? So, oh, man, but it's, it's fun though, but yeah, man, so alhamdulillah, no, I love those answers. I actually wanted to ask you something that came up kind of in conversations and stuff yeah. is that, like, how do you, but I'm cold, so I'm just no, you're good, you're good. I'm free of us, cold today, subhanallah. <laughs> so, um, something that I was thinking about was the ahadith, right? The hadith, right? Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sahih, all these different books, right? And Kyle's getting into conversations with it and different people will say, this hadith says this, this hadith says that. Okay, does this hadith contradict this hadith? And this? And it's like, oh, I'll only follow the Quran. But that's like, in the Quran, it also says to follow the traditions of the Prophet. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, okay, so she should follow like Sahih Bukhari. It's like, the Sahih obviously means like, again, that's like basically like factual evidence that of the tradition of the mm-hmm. Prophet and all these different things. So then a bunch of kind of debate and talk about different things. So I kind of wanted to ask your opinion as like someone who's like knowledgeable about it as well. Like what do you know about like the different like ha- hadith and like how to get, make sure like you're getting the right thing and how some people can take a hadith and like twist them or not twist them or use them to like, you know, it's just your, I guess your okay. overall preference. Of, okay. Uh, okay. Number one, uh, I'm not, I'm not knowledgeable on too much. Like I want to say I'm the most knowledgeable person on this. Number one, I, was, I, I would say this is, we have to take from the Quran, definitely. Mm-hmm. And we have to take from the Ahadith. Mm-hmm. Right? Allah says, Ati'u Allah wa Ati'u Rasul. Mm-hmm. Obey Allah and be a messenger. Right? Clear example that everyone knows. Salah, for example. In the Quran, it never tells us to pray. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Right? It never tells us how to pray. It just says what? Aqimu Salah wa Atu Zakah. Establish a prayer and give charity. You know what I'm saying? So, the Ahadith gives us the guidelines that we need to perfect our Islam. So, it comes in hand in hand. Right when it comes to a hadith, in general, I would say this is a topic for a scholar because this is very deep. Yeah, because it, de- that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So I don't, wanna, I don't get into it too much. Mm-hmm. But what what I will say is what I will say is, we take from the Quran, right? We take from the Quran. We follow. We, no, sorry, sorry, not take off one. We follow the Quran, and we follow the hadith, Prophet mm-hmm. and we follow so both, sad. right? And we and we use both, right? Those who say we're only following the Quran, they're completely wrong, because. The most basic thing of salah. How how are you are you gonna pray? If you only follow the Quran, how are you gonna pray? Yeah. How you know what fajr dura after maghrib is? How you know where the qibla is? You know what I'm saying like stuff like that, or not the qibla. Like, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that that it, it wouldn't be complete unless without the, that hadith. The Sunnah Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So so, so it comes in both. Like like in the Quran, Atiyah Allah, Atiyah Rasul. There's an ayah in the Quran that says, "Wa ma ataqum Rasulu fakhduhu." Whatever the Prophet uh, 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 brought to you, you take. Mm-hmm. Whatever he told you to stay away from, you stay away from it. Mm-hmm. Meaning we take from the Prophet, Sallam, right? And also the hadith are from Allah from Allah SWT. As the hadith says, that he did not speak from his wombs and desires, but it is, re- it is a revelation. Meaning the hadith, they're not Allah's words exactly, but it is revelation, meaning what? It is brought to Prophet Sallam to teach us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying it's not it's not from the the, the the Prophet didn't come up with everything and teach us. It's from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He taught us. It is not Allah's words verbatim because the Quran is Allah's verbatim speech, mm-hmm. right? It's not the Hadith are not Allah's verbatim speech, but it is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mm-hmm. It's through the Prophet Sallam, yeah, yeah. and then He taught us right all these things. So I was in terms of like the the those things I would say. Right, speak to your local imam, speak to your local scholars. I don't want to get in too depth into it because mm-hmm. it would be too much and too confusing. It's too deep of a topic. Mm-hmm. What I would say is we follow the Quran and we follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. And we, take, and, and, and we use a hadith. 
Right. So we, we, we don't say, I don't take from the hadith on the Quran, or we don't say, I just follow the Quran and not the hadith. لا لا. We use both. Mm-hmm. We follow the Quran. Yeah. As, as I said, Ati'u Allah, wa Ati'u Rasul, Yubi Allah, and Yubi is Messenger. No, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So just one last piece is I want to ask about okay. this. So you know how like, there's like Kawi, like Kawi, like strong hadith versus like weak hadith? Yeah. So I was obviously looking in like, like Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, and Sahih uh, At-Tamarini. at tirmidhi Right? So there's yeah. that one. And then, but there's like a couple other ones. And I'm looking through them. It's like some of them are like fabricated ones or something yeah. like this or that. But I know like the, anything that says Sahih and then blank, blank yeah. is like that's like Sahih. Mm-hmm. Like that's basically like, okay, like that's ver- been verified. Yeah. Right? So this this falls into, this is deep, this falls into the science of a hadith. Mm-hmm. Right? The science of hadith, like the science of hadith. It's a broad science, right? Mm-hmm. It, when if you study inshallah in the future, it, it explains to you what classifies a hadith to be sahih, mm-hmm. what classifies a hadith to be daif, what classifies a hadith to be hasan. So there, so there are different steps that a hadith goes through for the scholars, to, for for the ulama to say that this hadith is sahih. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very very in depth, but no one just says what hadith or daif or sahih. No, there's, there's there's steps that happen. There's like layers there's to layer the game. Okay. To understand like how is hadith sahih. Because mm-hmm. of A, B, and C, and D, how is hadith taif? Because the, the, there was a break in the chain, and you have to understand this. Called hadith, when it came to a hadith, there's like small intricate things that can take a hadith from like sahih to taif. Mm-hmm. Right? The person's memory, right? the person if he's trustworthy, the person's character, right? So, sense of a hadith is very intricate, mm-hmm. very very intricate detail where. The scholars who took time to to gather a hadith from the different scholars and their teachers and and and, and their teachers, it took time and took effort. You know what I'm saying? So to understand these things, you have to study like books like Bayqouni, Nukhbat al Fikr, those kind of books to kind of understand yeah. like the science of, uh, of of a hadith and why a hadith is classified as as a, as a sahih. Why is it daif? Mm-hmm. Why, why is it mursal? Right? Why is it why is it mawquf? Or a different name, for example. Mm-hmm. So that's just by studying, right? Yeah. This is a podcast, not a class. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I'll no, you're good. Yeah, because I was just wondering. Because again, for me, like Islamically, like obviously you said, we're always learning. Yeah. And I know that a lot of people around me right now. Oh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not no scholar, no sheikh. Huh? Yeah, like, yeah, no. Okay. But I mean, but you're you're educated enough to the point where. You've been in different countries, different places, mm-hmm. studied from again, like you said, like your your Somali in one on one classes, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, of, yeah. So obviously, so it's someone who could hear from different perspectives mm-hmm. as well. So again, and again, it's a, someone in the local community now as yeah. well. So again, like I always like to ask because you never know where. Oh, I actually heard this because mm-hmm. you know, for me, like I'm not like a scholar. The issue I would say, man, I would say, like my advice to people is, we have to stop with the with the he said she said. Mm-hmm. It's a big thing in Islamic community. Like for example, like if someone if someone were to be sick, for example, right. Mm-hmm. If you're sick, right, or or an individual is sick, mm-hmm. you have a crazy disorder or a crazy disease, mm-hmm. for example, and they're like, okay, how do I get cured, right? They're trying to find the specialist, like, yo, who knows the best? I want the best, the best. I have, I have a heart condition, right? I have, I have cancer, whatever. Mm-hmm. I want to get cured. I want the best, the best doctor to cure me. Is that what I'm saying? So they will go out of the way to find the best thing, right? But when it comes to Islam, it's like Islam, what? It is the medicine what for your heart, for your soul. So if you want the medicine, you want the cure, you have to get it from the people, from the specialists, from the scholars. But the issue is we have is we just go on TikTok or Instagram, whatever, and the first thing we hear is, oh, it sounds nice. Let me, I think it's right. That's yeah. the issue we have a lot because there's a lot of things that are fabricated or that just sound nice. Mm-hmm. It, just, it sounds beautiful, right? Or if someone reads, for example, Surah Yasin 400 times, then Allah will grant them a house in paradise. Oh, man. If, or someone gives, you know, if, if on this day of the month, if someone were to pray for rakahs, then Allah will forgive the past sins. It sounds beautiful. Mm-hmm. But it's not correct. It's mm-hmm. not part of. It's not part of the Deen of Islam. Mm-hmm. So in order to understand the Deen of Islam, you have to get it from those who know it the best. Those are the scholars, the people who went, who spent time, who learned, who studied. But now is anything we hear online. Alhamdulillah. Anything we hear online is we just take it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I heard a guy one day saying a video that if you do A, B, and C, like yeah, yesterday, yeah. like uh, yesterday, I seen I seen a video of a guy saying like. One of the signs of seeing Laylatul Qadr is if you see the trees bowing, like if, if the trees are like. Oh, I saw something like that, but like last year, it was like or like the sun will this or it'll rain. The trees, the tree, of this. course, there's signs, but that I was like, I don't know if it's true. And I never heard it. Was like, was ajib to me, like the trees bowing and stuff. A lot, I don't know if it's true, but I never heard it. But it just sound crazy to me. Or mm-hmm. like these people who bring a lot of like different like fabrications in the religion that just sound good, mm-hmm. but 
it has nothing to do with religion of Islam. Well, yeah. And if you do it, you won't get edged for doing this thing. And even with like Laylatul Qadr, like a good exa- pretty good yeah. example, because like, obviously, inshallah, we're entering the last 10 nights, inshallah. So, like, Allah, Allah, what's the reason Laylatul Qadr? Inshallah. I mean, and it's like funny because, like, for me, like Laylatul Qadr, like, I look at like the Surah in the Quran that mm-hmm. talks about it. Yeah. Like like where it's literally like like a thousand months yeah. of worship, yeah. and I'm like, okay, cool. Like this is in the Quran; it talks about it. Nice. And then I'll hear things like you're saying, like outside of where it's like the someone, someone said, or someone yeah. said that it'll. You, it was yesterday. Or it was there. It was yeah. this. I'm like, no, we don't know what day it is. And I don't know if how accurate this hadith is or not, but it was like saying that like the Prophet peace be upon him knew the date. But then was going to tell you or portray it. I, I, I asked him about that a lot. Right? I have to verify a lot of if, if it's, it's hadith or not. I have to verify. I don't really know myself. But one thing I do know is there are signs. There are certain signs that mm-hmm. could be. What awesome. are some that you've heard? Like rain, like a calm, a calm morning, like a calm still morning. But what I would say, man, is is don't focus on the signs. Just go hard Trip every night. Every night, yeah. Yeah, go hard every night. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why focus on what night could be when... Oh, it could be an odd night. It has to be an odd night. No, it doesn't. It could be any of the last night. Could be a night. But then it's like, just treat every night. And like the worst part is, like, the whole thing about the odd night thing is... Certain, but the, 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 the funny thing about the odd night is, yeah, it could likely fall on an odd night. But that doesn't mean that you treat the even nights as if you don't do anything. Yeah. Like, it's still... It's still, I'm like, it's still showing up on night. <laughs> you know I'm saying like it's still the best tonight of Ramadan. Like go regardless. hard regardless. Like, even if it's not the the night of Laylatul Qadr, right? You're still getting rewards and you're getting edged and you want to benefit from the days of Ramadan because you might not even see the next one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Anything like if you never miss a night, you never miss a moment of exactly. prayer or an hour of prayer. Yeah. Then you're never to gonna guarantee. miss it. If you if every if every night you give charity and every night you say you know what, I'm gonna read ten pages of the Quran or one page, right? Or I'm gonna do a kara for ten minutes every single night. Then one night will fall on it, you know what I'm saying. Regardless, it, like, it, ha- like, it makes sense. But one that night. shows the consistency of our lifestyle, you know what I'm so consistency of faith, the consistency of being a Muslim. It's like it's so not I'm just saying. oh, like I'm only here for the Layl of the God. Well, it's yeah, good, everyone. I'm here for, for, <laughs> you for every every single night. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you work hard every single night because Layl of the Yes, it's it's the best night, right? It's the best night. But every single night, Allah frees his slaves from the hellfire. Mm-hmm. Ramadan, right? So you still want to get the edge of standing every night, as the as the uh, uh, as the hadith says that whoever stands up in the month of Ramadan, right, with firm belief and hope and his reward, then Allah will forgive all his past sins. So you want to be standing every night, regardless of the night that it is. Every night you want to give charity, mm-hmm. or every day you want to you know. I'm saying like do adhkar or read Quran or make dua. So you want to work hard every single night, regardless, mm-hmm. right? And you hope that you do the best every single night, so that the night that you exerted your effort. Will be the night of Laylatul Qadr. Inshallah. So every night you go yeah. hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, like, people always try to guess, like, oh, is that night? Is that night? Of course, you can, after after the night, you can kind of, like, look, after, <clears throat> look at signs and stuff. But I would say, just go hard every single night. Mm-hmm. Every night, try. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like, you might not even see an, another Ramadan. Yeah. Like, no one's guaranteed to see Ramadan. You know what I'm saying? So you want to always benefit from the moment that you're in, mm-hmm. right? Regardless of Laylatul Qadr or not Laylatul Qadr. You want to go hard every night so that the night you do go hard. And the night that it falls on it, mm-hmm. you're gonna do the best. Yeah. You, know you want to start now, now, like if you want to be consistent right now, like if you just wait a one day, you might miss a day. Yeah. You, know you might just leave. My, you you might guess and it's the wrong day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you want to have the consistency from now to the end. Like you know what? Every night, inshallah, I'm gonna do something. Yeah. And no one's saying pray all night. No one's saying read Quran all night. But do something. Yeah. It's not like read the whole Quran every night. It's like. Have then, something to give to Allah to give yeah, to Allah says, worship your creator. Allah has to like free Allah to the best of your abilities. You know what I'm saying? Like do what you can, right? And just the most important thing is just be sincere about it. Mm-hmm. It's the most important thing that like, you 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 go out every time you say, "Yeah, Allah, I'm doing this for your sake." Like like you have to sound like you don't know what deed will take you to paradise. Mm-hmm. You don't know, right? You, you might be praying your entire life, right, in in the first row. But one day, right, you see someone who's hungry, you gave him food. And because that deed, Allah forgive all your sins. You know what I'm saying? Like, a yeah. good example. The man who killed 100 people, right? He literally, all he did is, you know what, I'm going to make Toba. Uh, he, he decided to make Toba. He went to a different city. He died halfway. It's a long story. I love this one. I yeah. always tell you this one. He, di- he died halfway. And guess what happened? Allah had mercy on him. And the angel of mercy took his soul. You know what I'm saying? Like he, like he did it because he, he was because he was like one step closer to the. So basically, the whole story. What happened was, okay, let's make it short. But there was a man who killed 99 people, and then he said, "You know what?" He went to someone who was who was a worshiper. He wasn't a scholar, and then he asked him, "Is there a toba for me? Like, am I able to make toba to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala?" And the man said, "Brother, you killed 100 people. Let's say 99 people. 
like, oh, I'm sorry, it's no tober for you. So he got him too. So he put a hundred. Mm-hmm. So then you went to a scholar who had knowledge and who, and, who, and who had wisdom and who had who understood the 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 deen of Islam properly. And how the Prophet peace be upon him had like the each person is different. So you have to treat this situation differently than this situation. Mm-hmm. So when he came to him. He treated him instead of like someone who's just a worshiper with that little bit of extra. Yeah, because a worshiper, a worshiper, and an alim is different. Some who worships Allah. And someone who knows the deen are different. Like someone worship Allah a lot, but his knowledge is not is not expanded mm-hmm. and 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 and, uh, and wide like the scholar. So the scholar has ilm, he has knowledge, he has wisdom, and he he understands the deen and he understands that Allah forgives all sins no matter what. As Allah, there's many ayahs in the Quran that Allah forgives all major sins, right? Even shirk. But if if you, if you die upon shirk, Allah will forgive you. Even mm-hmm. someone makes shirk and you make tawbah to Allah while you're alive, Allah will forgive you. Allah forgives all all um all sins. The most merciful. Exactly. So when he went to the scholar, he said, um, I killed a hundred people. Will Allah have mercy on me? And will Allah forgive me? He said, yes, but on one condition, that you cannot be in the place that you're in right now because the place that you're in is causing you to do all these wrongs. So go to this town where it's a better environment and the better people, right? And you'll live a better lifestyle, right? And you'll be able to worship Allah properly. Mm-hmm. So on the way there, he made, he, he made his intention to make Tawbah and to go change. So he died halfway through the road. So the angel of mercy came down and the angel of punishment came down. And they were arguing on whether, like, on, on who should take a soul, right? The, the angel of mercy was saying, this guy was, you know, he, he, was, he was on his way to make Tawbah, right? He was trying to change his lifetime. I'm going to take a soul. The angel of punishment said, this guy killed 100 people, right? He, he didn't make Tawbah yet. He was traveling. So let me take a soul. Then another angel came down and they, they, they said, let's weigh the distance. If the distance from where he came from, right, is closer, right, if he's closer to where he came from, then the angel of punishment will take a soul. Mm-hmm. But if he was closer to where he was going, right, to the place where he wanted to go change, then the angel of mercy will take a soul. So Allah shifted the earth, right, so that he was closer to where he was going. And then ah. the angel of mercy took a soul, right? And Allah had mercy on him. And Allah, Allah uh, went and uh, forgave him. Uh, which shows that I forgot, what, I forgot how, how I even got here. Um, how, how, how did I even get here? Just like how we were talking about... Um, oh, the, oh, the, the month of Ramadan. So like you, you work hard through through all these nights you know, looking for Allah's mercy, looking for Allah's rahmah, looking for Allah's you know, maghfirah and, and bounty upon you. So cast a little qadr, of course, but work hard every night. So that's a guarantee. Yeah. It's a little guarantee telling you every single day there might be one day in these days where it's going to come. So just work hard all days. Don't don't slack off. Any yeah, day. try your best. No, I love that. You know? And if just again because there is like a lot of people that will listen, people that are curious about Islam and are wonder like, what is Islam? Why this? Why that? Like, what is something that you'd recommend to someone uh, that is like a new Muslim? And what is something you'd rec- you tell someone about Islam that is like maybe a common misconception that people might be like, oh, Islam? What's that? Like, what is that? So I would sorry. Can you say, can you say that one so more time? the one question is. Uh, I'm curious as to what you think about like if what's a common misconception of Islam like mm. might people might not know and what's something that you'd recommend to like a new revert or someone who's on the path of learning more about Islam. So for the for so for the revert, I'm gonna say is the path of learning Islam is to to seek Islam in its proper way by first learning it from those who have knowledge by going to your local masajid, by by going to your to your to the scholars of your area. And asking them to teach me or to refer me to someone where they can teach me, right? Because normally, a lot of times when people are on this journey, they just go on the internet and they go researching and the internet can take you to a lot of different places that yeah. you don't know. <laughs> Google will take you yeah, everywhere. Google will take you everywhere, right? So if someone who doesn't really know, that's, it could be detrimental to your iman. Because you might see things that might even like, get you confused. Like, why is it like this? Right? Why is it like that? Or or it's not like making sense to you. So Islam, you need to have a teacher. Mm-hmm. And that's how Islam came down, right? The Prophet ﷺ was the first teacher. He taught the Sahaba. The Sahaba, the yeah. Tabi'een. The Atba'u the, 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 the Tabi'een. And it went down like that, right? So that's why Islam, if, if, if you look at the, if you look at the, the chain of like knowledge or, or of narration, it's like, my teacher taught me who, who his teacher taught him. and his teacher. So everyone had a teacher, right? A teacher, a mentor, someone to guide you. So for the river is, you have to find a teacher and a mentor, right? A teacher is someone who can teach you the proper Islamic correct knowledge. Mm-hmm. Or a mentor is someone that can keep you on the correct path and refer you to places to go to that are correct. Mm-hmm. Right? Someone who's trustworthy, right? Someone who's some someone who has the ability to kind of like right keep you under their wing, right? And and help you out through, throughout the process of, of seeking Islamic knowledge. Mm-hmm. But I would not advise someone to go on Google YouTube to watch a bunch of YouTube videos and he'll just be confused and like he won't understand. Mm-hmm. As someone as a 
So as for a misconception about Islam, number one, my advice to those who are not Muslim is, is go to the masajid and really ask questions. Really get to learn about what Islam is, right? Because in the media, or Islam is preached or is put out as this, this horrendous religion where we're just out for for blood and we want to hurt people and we're haters and you know we're oppressive to our people and we're not kind. Of, but Islam is the complete opposite of it. Mm-hmm. It's the complete opposite. Like 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 I'm telling you, Islam is based off mannerisms, right? Being good to your neighbors. Muslim or non-Muslim, right? If you look at the time when 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 the when the Muslims were were conquering the lands, right? They were told that do not hurt, like do not touch anybody. Right? Don't these people who are, are civilians? They are not Muslim, right? Don't don't harm them, right? The churches don't break down churches, right? Let people live freely how they want to be, but treat everyone kindly, be good to others, right? So Islam, there's there's a lot of mannerisms, right? So I would tell people who are not Muslim is really go to the masjid, right? Or go ask your the imams in the community about Islam, right? Go open the best thing, open the Quran and read. Just read it and try to understand what it's saying. Like go to get an English translation and read the Quran. Actually see what's in it for yourself. A lot of people like the issue they, they just go online and they watch a guy talking about Islam. Yeah, same you know thing. Like, oh the Quran says yeah, this. <laughs> there's so many so many like English translation Qurans. Get one. Just read it. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So I would say just like don't don't just assume, right? The whole assumption of oh like I know someone who, for example like people say like for example there'll be a person who's not a practicing Muslim right? Mm-hmm. Not, not every Muslim is a practicing Muslim. Mm-hmm. So like not every not everyone is perfect. Mm-hmm. So maybe Ramadan or and you see some like a guy eating for example, and the guy says and then someone will come to him and say are you fasting? Like yeah I'm fasting. But I seen the other guy he's Muslim his name is Muhammad he ate food. And I thought okay listen that's not really Islam but. You have to kind of like tell them, okay, look, f- look for yourself. You, know, you have to explain to them and say that's not how Islam is. So I'll say like that's that's with uh, regards to just assuming. Because also like so examples, you know what it is too is like multiple sheikhs I've talked to about this question and stuff. They've all kind of said the same thing, and it kind of made me realize how true this is. Is that for some reason yeah. the world and including Muslims themselves yeah. put the biggest magnifying glass on Islam, but they don't do it to any other way of thinking. So, for example, like yeah. how many times, oh, it's Lent or it's Easter or, or put the Ash Wednesday and put it on your forehead or something. It's not like I go up to some random person who might be Christian or Catholic and be like, hey, why don't you put that on your forehead today? Mm-hmm. You don't even, you don't, I won't ever ask that question mm-hmm. to anyone. Mm-hmm. But with this Muslims, like you said, like, oh, why aren't you fasting today? Even like other Muslims, other Muslims who like when a woman's on her period, like yeah. she just shouldn't fast, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, fast exactly. that day. But then they'll be like, why aren't you fasting? It's mm-hmm. like... Yo, like, yo, why are you? Yeah, it's yeah. like you know what I mean. There's so much pressure on Muslims all yeah. the time to be flawless, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. they don't even judge any other way of thinking yeah, that they yeah. have. No, it's or, perfect. No, everyone makes mistakes. But I would say for the non-Muslim is, don't take your Islam from from TV, social media. That's that's not where you get it, right? Yeah. Open the Quran, talk to your local scholars, and they'll actually explain it to you like what Islam is really about. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things on TV or social media. It's not what Islam is about. Oh, every time and they show them, the, the, <laughs> every time they show the Middle Eastern, the um, nah, 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 yeah. and then it's like, oh yeah, the jihad's over there. You know what I mean? It's yeah, always it's, some like terrorist thing or this like, yeah. dude, like what? Are you, why are you doing this? Why are they it's showing always, us? Like always, this? always like the wrong idea. Or it's like the issue is to be a Muslim who's a Muslim and you do something wrong, and that will be attributed to Islam. That's a big issue. So a guy, mm-hmm. a Muslim guy, will do something crazy. Oh yeah, because he's Muslim. But no, like separate Islam and the individual. Mm-hmm. Islam is Islam is perfect. The individual is not perfect, right? Yeah. So don't so don't study Islam based off the the actions of a person. Learn it from Islam what it is, right? As 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 a religion. Because mm-hmm. if if I look at you for example, I say okay, Islam is you, right? You make mistakes, mm-hmm. right? It's you're, you are not perfect. Yeah, so I can't can't be perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's no one's perfect. But the way of life, Islam. The perfect way of life mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying So I would say Go to your local imam Ask them questions Really inquire about it From a sincere perspective If you really want to Sincere understand Islam Go to your mosque And ask them Right the mosque for, for, And for non-Muslims Who are shy of thinking Oh I can't go inside the mosque Guys the mosque is open For everyone If you want to come inside And you genuinely want to learn About Islam Just go and, and, and Ask your imam Like, yeah. like no, no one is going to deny you From coming to the mosque Because you're not Muslim mm-hmm. Looking about Islam They will accept you Come inside Always ask and inquire for knowledge. That's yeah, the wrong thing. Acquire. No one, no one at the door. The message is going to kick you away. So 
don't don't feel like oh like I can't come in the mosque I'm not Muslim no come in the mosque come mm-hmm. and say I want to speak to the Imam I have questions about Islam mm-hmm. people are gonna welcome you right yeah and now is Ramadan so now is the best time to come to the Masjid right? yeah come see the Imam come see the ever the whole community is there iftar so like you'll see like a a real like community thing happening in the Masjid mm-hmm. so also come to the Masjid ask questions and you'll find your answers inshallah hopefully. Inshallah, I love that. So kind of going off like nearing the end here, I want to ask you a couple questions, right? So one of the questions I have for you is where do you see the world going in five years? The world going in five years, man. Oh, man. Uh, where is the world going in five years? I don't know. With this whole AI stuff, it's going like, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Like, te- technology-wise, it's uh, it's advancing like crazy. Mm-hmm. The whole AI and chat GBT and... Being do you see a- Neuralink? No, what's that? Neuralink, so they put a chip in your brain? So oh, like, no, no, I don't, I don't want, <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't want no chip, no brain, none of that, man. Oh, the, nah, I'm good with that stuff, man. Neuralink, so they put it in your brain, and like, there's a guy that did the first human trial has been like working basically, okay. and he, he's a paraplegic, or okay. he was in an accident, so he can't use like his motor functions and okay. stuff. So he's, um, they put it in his brain, or whatever, but he mm. was basically using like his eyes or his like brain yeah to like move the cursor and play games play chess mm. played civilization six a game and he said he spent six hours he stayed up all night playing because he was, huh I, no, Ajib, like interesting like yeah, like, yeah. Oh. It, it was crazy right but then i had this idea right? i had this thought and i wanted to ask your opinion on this if someone puts the Neuralink thing in their brain right because clearly you'll eventually be able to basically have google in your brain and yeah. whatever right theoretically would you become a hafiz if you downloaded the quran into your brain or like I can, Res- I, I, from recitation, do you know what I'm saying? Because clearly you're googling <laughs> in your brain. So you, could you recite Quran from the neural? Obviously, I would never do this, right? Yeah. I was just wondering, thinking like, like obviously when you think of things, you think, okay, what could it be used for the greatest good, right? But like, if that if that was even po- if that was even possible, I would just be like shocked, like John, like what, like right? That, but that, that could happen. But that's kind of like where we're going with it, like the like the metaverse. If that's possible, stuff. I'll be like, subhanallah, like that's crazy. I don't know, I'm gonna put like the world coming to end. Like I'm gonna do my kind. Like I'm not, I'm not saying, like oh, that's crazy. But I know, like, like the world, like of course, like it has a decline in terms of society. As mm-hmm. I just mentioned, like there's always a time where the time will be worse. So mm-hmm. it just Allah. I don't know where it's gonna go, man. I don't know. Technology is taking some place, you know what I'm saying? Like people are just are developing in different ways, right? Mm-hmm. It has benefits, it's benefits, but there's a lot of harms in terms of the Islamic perspective, a lot of confusion, right? A lot of uh a, a lot of benefits so it has benefits Islamically. Because knowledge can spread faster. Yeah, so it has benefits, it has its cons, but it's like I don't know, man. It's like it can go both ways. It could be good or it could be but yeah. five years a lot But five years it will change because Five years ago today it was what two thousand and what nineteen nineteen right before 19? like COVID and stuff yeah yeah a lot of things were different oh yeah than, than now oh my god yeah yeah like the whole concept of AI ChatGPT was not even like as crazy like you put information into the chat box and boom everything you need like if I had the university back then then I'd be like yeah, I would oh I would have I would have breezed I would have cooked through uni. things yeah I would have I would have breezed through uni you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so. Allah Allah man Just wh- Whatever it goes I just ask Allah That he keeps us firm On our deen man I mean uh, Whatever the world goes man <laughs> right. He keeps us firm That he allow us To still be You know Muslims And who are on the street path man nah, Allah Allah Where the world's going yeah. I don't know but nah, Inshallah that, Inshallah yeah, yeah, yeah. But Something that I always ask Every guest Obviously to end And everything Is what's your favorite quote And obviously Again Knowing like Quran and stuff I would yeah. love it If you even said Even like a favorite part Of the Quran Or favorite surah as well Oh man Uh for me personally, I'm very big on on du'a, man. Just asking, asking Allah. I think the last couple of years, I'll say the last f- three to four years, I've been big on on really, really, really depending on Allah for for things in my life, mm-hmm. right? Especially like achievements or anything. So one ayah that I resonate with um, a couple of ayahs. But uh, one of the ayahs where, uh, where Allah says, You mind if I recite the ayah? Yeah, go ahead. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And it's an ayah that says that in the Quran, if you look at it, it says every time the Prophet was asked, they said like alunaka. They asked you, O oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Qul say to them this and this and this and that, right? Uh, for example, Allah in Surah Baqarah, in the same Surah, He said, 
ويسالونك عن الخمر والمسد لك اسي با القال ان ثينكس ري سي قول سي تو ذم فيه ما اثم صلاه الله تو ذا مسنجر سي تو ذم او تيل ذم بون ذس ايا وين الله سيد واذا سالك عبادي عني او محمد وين وين ماي سيرفنت اسكس يو ابا مي فاني قريب اي ام نير هي نيفر هي نيفر تول ذم سي ذات اي ام نير الله سين الله منشن ذا اي ام نير مينينغ ذا بروفيت دوز هاف تو تيل يو ذا اي ام نير I'm always near. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, part, it's, it's, direct. it's like a direction. Direct. Yeah. It's a connection between you and Allah. There's no, there's no middleman. Because the other ayah, it says, O oh Muhammad, tell them this. Right? قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمُ كَبِيرُونَ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنَ الْمَحِيضِ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ Say to them this. So, قُلْ So, Allah told the Prophet, say to them. Right? But this ayah, Allah is saying, I am near. When they ask you about me, I am near. Right, there's no middleman to show yeah. you how there's a closest with Allah with and the, that's also the beauty of Allah. how the Quran is written is like, mm-hmm. like recited as well. Written, yeah, it's like, there is such a beautification of the language. Exactly, how it's so like it's so nitpicky. Intricate, you know I mean? yeah, it's very intricate. Yeah. yeah, so I would say, my for me personally, is like always ask Allah, man. Just like in any situation that you are, always ask Allah. Like for the small, like even the Sahaba, what the, they would ask Allah for the smallest things, right? Even like if they broke a shoelace, they ask Allah, Allah, give me a new shoelace. Of course, you put in the effort to get things, right? You always take your means, but always rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Don't be someone who relies on people. Because at the end of the day, anything you receive, right, the means it might, be, it might be from someone, but it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything, Everything yeah. came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So it's all a matter of asking. And every single one of us, we all have our aspirations, our goals in life, right? We want to achieve things. I want to do A, B, C, and D. I want to make this amount of money. I want to travel. I want to have a family, right? I want to learn the deen of Islam. So we all have our different goals in life. But at the end of the day, the only th- the only one that can give it to us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. So we're not asking for it. And a hadith that amazed me where, where it says that, that if every single one... On planet Earth is a hadith. If every mm-hmm. single one were to come on the land, right, and they were to ask Allah for every single thing that they wanted, right, it would not take away from Allah's throne. Just how if you took a needle and did it, and did it in the ocean, that w- that amount of water took out. That's the example Allah gave. That's how much basically like of you know what I'm saying like of you of, can't even conceptualize can't, can't, exactly. that exactly. Like, like if so everyone crazy. were to come together and ask Allah for everything they wanted from A to Z, everything. It will take as much from Allah Just how you take water f- on f- uh, You take a needle And you dip in the ocean The amount of water That comes out of that needle Comparative to the ocean Compared to the ocean Right But even that Even that Even that Isn't you, a comparison you, you, you are not taking anything From Allah Ta'ala yeah. you know So like, knowing that like, Allah has everything like, right? he, like to use that example Is easy for us to conceptualize But in, even if you conceptualize that At some level It's insane Yeah it's like Even with that example It's like You know that Allah's bounty Is endless mm-hmm. Right So why wait? Why don't you ask Allah? Try your best. Ask Allah. Allah has everything in the world. Like Allah has the power to do anything. Again, don't feel like you're being greedy asking for, for example, Allah. I'll give you a good example. Z- uh, Zakaria alayhi salam, right? Allah told him, you're going to have a child. He wanted a child. Mm-hmm. Allah told him, you'll have a child. He says, how can I have a child? What 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 My wife is barren, right? And I'm, and I'm old. Like I can't have children anymore. And that time he was like, like he was very old. Like at a point where You cannot even have kids, right? Allah is telling him, you'll have a child. He's saying, oh Allah, how can I have a child when my wife is barren and I can't, we can't have kids anymore, mm-hmm. right? Allah said in the Quran, وَهُوَ عَلَيَّ هَيِّن For Allah, it's easy. Mm-hmm. So the money Allah says, for Allah, it's easy for Allah. Like mm-hmm. Allah can do that for you. And Allah blessed him with a son named Yahya. The next page, if you look at the surah, the same thing or something similar happened to Maryam alayhi salam. When the angel came to her and said that Allah is going to bless you with yeah. a child, she said, "How can I have a child when I have no husband? No man, no man has touched me ever, right? How can I have a child?" Then Allah said, the "Same thing. Well, who are Allah hand for Allah is easy. So anything that you want in life, for Allah is easy, man. All you got is to raise your hand, right, and get up and ask Allah. Oh Allah, I need A, B, and C, and D, right? Help me out." Right now we live in the area of like the whole like mental health area and uh, anxiety and sadness, meditation. And, right, and, like all like go like the key that is ask Allah. You're 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 going through a tough time. Ask him. Make du'a to Allah. Keep asking him. Keep asking. Keep asking him. Right, and be consistent with it. Like don't just say I asked Allah once and I'm no, I didn't get it. No, keep asking Allah. Right, like I was telling the story about me how I even came to the city. To be honest, I was asking Allah and I ended up here. Mm-hmm. Right, so you have to always just keep on asking Allah regardless and be patient. Because Allah knows the perfect time to give you something better than you. 
how much times where we made dua for something and we're like, oh Allah, please, I want this thing now and it will be the best thing and we're planning our life. If I got this now, then I can do this and this will happen. And we never got it. Then we got it at a time like, yo, I'm actually happy I got it now. I was so much more ready now. I was so now much more ready before. now before. I'm, mm-hmm. a lot, I'm a lot happy that this happened to me now, right? For example, how many people said, I want to get married to this person, ABC? It didn't work out. Then when two years later, they found a different individual. And those two years, they built up life experiences. They became a better person. Then it's like, Alhamdulillah, this is the perfect time for me to get married, for example, right? Mm-hmm. So it was keep asking Allah, constantly ask Him, right? And have good thoughts of Allah. Mm-hmm. There's many I can see But dua man I can talk about it for days yeah. But have good thoughts of Allah Right That Allah is as if you uh, How you perceive him right? Like Allah Is how you perceive So if you perceive Allah To be to be A Lord that is forgiving And that is generous and loving That's how Allah will be to you mm-hmm. Right And just this hadith where it says Ask Ask Allah Call unto Allah While you are certain Of the answer Like you call unto Allah say, Oh Allah I want to do A, B, and C, and D. And then you use all your efforts. You exert your efforts. And you hope that you have the certainty that it will happen. Mm-hmm. It may not happen right now. It may not happen like five years from now or ten years from now. But always ask Allah and have that, that hope study that whatever the I tawakkal, ask for, right? the tawakkal, yeah, that whatever I ask for, it will happen. That's that's what I see like for me. That's that's what like resonates me the most. Just mm-hmm. always ask Allah, no, I love every that. small thing. I like for everything that like I want to do one thing. I mean, dua, oh Allah, please make it easy for me. So, and if it doesn't happen, guess what? You get the end of the big dua. Yeah, so you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't lose. It's a win-win. You know win. It's a win-win regardless. Like this hadith where where I can't remember the exact quote, the exact uh, wording of the hadith. But it was like it was like uh, the 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 Sahab said we we want to ask Allah for more and more and more. And then the person keep always ask Allah, like keep always like Allah Akbar, like always ask mm-hmm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Like you, you will never lose. Mm-hmm. Either you get what you want, or it will be delayed for you, or what you ask for will be sent to the Akhirah. And what happens in the Hadith where where it talks about like your 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 ajr in the Akhirah that someone will come on Yom Al Qiyamah and you'll see all the du'as that he made for that he didn't get, and he will say, Oh Allah, I wish every du'a the dunya was all left to the Akhirah. Yeah, how much, how much, how much did you, like, at the time, how much you blessing it, it is, yeah, the time where you need it the most, how much, like, he's he seeing the ajr in front of him, he'll be like, Oh Allah, I wish all those du'as were brought to Yom al Qiyamah, ajr Yom al Qiyamah, right? So you never lose regardless. And that's like a, that's a way to change your mindset, too, because for me, even like, Alhamdulillah, like, obviously, like, you know, you're young 20s, mid 20s, yeah. everyone's like, businesses do this yeah. entrepreneurship and all these things and i've gotten into it and you make dua you make dua and you're like oh Allah, when's it gonna come when's it yeah. gonna come when's it gonna come like mm-hmm. all these delays 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 and everyone's like yo Ali, why is this so delayed why is this so delayed mm-hmm. and it's so crazy because mostly like my non-spiritual friends even if they're christian or non-christian mm-hmm. just more less spiritual mm-hmm. like, they're not really inclined that way they'll ask me like oh where is it at where is it at where is it at but anytime i talk to like uh, someone religious or a little more spiritual every time they're like it's a good thing Yeah like, Delay is a good thing And I'm like Weird like you know Ta'khir Like khir and delay You know mm. so it's like All these interesting things Where it's like When you do get things delayed That only means It's a springboard For your success Exactly It's like the for bungee me personally, like For me personally Like if I If I If I got my dua Every time I ask for it I wouldn't be making dua as much mm-hmm. Cause I feel like Allah wants us near I feel like all those times I've been making dua I've been waiting 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 I built a relationship With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that I have now, like where I, ch- I always ask Allah. Mm-hmm. Before it wasn't really like that. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're young and you're like, oh Allah, I want this new Mercedes Bentley car in my lot tomorrow, mm. and somehow you made a little bit of money here and there, you're 16, you're living the life, right? Boom, you're, getting, you're probably gonna forget about asking Allah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for me, like the time where I made the after things, and it came out like a way after, like a year, two, three years later. But in that process. I kept asking Allah, oh Allah, please, please, can you make it easy for me? Make it easy for me. And through those, through those processes or those times, it, I built a relationship to me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I can rely on Him for anything. Mm-hmm. Like if I need something, the first thing I go to, boom, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua. I want to get this done. Oh Allah, make it easy for me, right? So mm-hmm. the, alhamdulillah, the first thing that comes to my mind is ask Allah first. Because at the end of the day, everything comes from Allah. Mm-hmm. And the only aid that I need is aid of Allah. And every aid that comes is from Allah. Mm-hmm. So why don't you ask the one that who can give you everything that you need? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how I was personally. So delay is always good. Mm-hmm. Delay is good. Allah knows 
when things are are are, are best for you. The prime you know timing. The, yeah, the prime time. Allah knows when is good for you. Mm-hmm. And also, just keeping dua, be be consistent. You know, be consistent and don't don't lose hope, man. Like for example, like if you look at the seerah of the Prophet, of the Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at what happened. All the things that happened, just for him to conquer Mecca at the end. Mm-hmm. Right. Those 13 years, right? In, the Prophet's in, life is insane. Like, yeah, like, if you, you read if the stories. You, well, like, guys, I will say, like, if you want to understand life properly, read the seerah with contemplation. It will benefit Allah. Like, in terms of any aspect in your life, anything, read the seerah of the Prophet. That's like, time. he went through all these trials, everything, right? Just at the end, where he can come back and conquer Mecca again with all those habits with him. Right, look at look at everything that happened. Look at everyone that passed. Look at everyone that fought. Look at all the different scenarios that happened, and there's so much details in between. Just for everything to come back to the Fatih of Mecca, right? In the Fatih, look at Fatih Mubina, right? Ida Jannah Salawat wal Fatih. All those came back full 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 circle moment, right? You're from Mecca. You are Qatar Mecca. He loved he loved the city of Mecca. All those times he worked hard just to get back to Mecca. All those trials and tribulations just for Islam to be to grow huge. And to go back to Mecca And now look at Mecca today mm-hmm. Right? It's like the purpose It's like the we- It's like the hero's journey They call exactly. it Exactly like- Yeah in a sense Yeah so like You have to ask Allah But be patient It will come It might not be now It might not be five years It might not be ten years But do not let go of what you're asking for Because it will definitely come mm-hmm. And if not Maybe Allah will Replace what you're asking For something even better mm-hmm. You might be like Yo, I want to get this thing done But in reality Allah changed it with something better Like you know what This is actually a lot better for me Mm-hmm. I'm happy because instead of this, I've always noticed that when you make du'a and you start noticing that, even in the little ones, right? Yeah. Obviously, the big du'as versus like you know mm-hmm. du'as that you make, but there's some du'as you make so sincerely. You're like, mm-hmm. oh Allah, like whatever, you, however you do it, get it done, please. And yeah. then like, alhamdulillah, there's like a couple times in my life, alhamdulillah, where I've noticed I made a du'a and like, Allah, next day, yeah, like yeah. next week, something happens that mm-hmm. exactly fixes that issue, that problem in a way where I couldn't even have imagined it. Yeah, man, I can. I can Tell stories about like mm-hmm. just for days, even how I got here. Like I was telling, like I was going to to come here and lead, and then come to the mosque here, and that year didn't happen. The next year didn't happen. All of a sudden, boom! I got a message saying, "Akhi, do you want to come this year Ramadan?" I was like, "Yeah, perfect. I want to come Ramadan, inshallah." Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like the time will come. The time, it's but if if those first two times you came, we would have gotten to sit here do this. You never know. Yeah, like everything, <laughs> everything has a purpose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. the podcast. You know, mm-hmm. right? So everything has a time, and purpose, and there's a reason why Allah put things in certain places, and there's a reason why you might go through a hard time for a certain reason. Like if you look at the the left of the process of the Prophet. Uh, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He went through a hard time There was times in his life Where he went through difficulty Look at the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi mm-hmm. It was difficulty From his brothers betraying him From being put in a well From being sold as a slave From being accused of adultery From being thrown to jail Yeah I recently just uh, read it Like it was, oh, it was that, like, Just at the end to like He became the leader of Egypt mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying So it's like You might see yourself as Yo man I don't know Like I'm in this rut I'm in this hole Like when When am I going to see The end Of the tunnel The light mm-hmm. The light will come just make dua to Allah Be firm upon it And the will come Right now you, Right now you, you You might think It's the end of the world Like I don't know How I'm gonna get out of this Financial You know Mental health situation Spiritual situation Physical Like physical health Like you're sick You might think How am I going to get out of this But you just make dua And wait man Right There'll be times where you'll cry There'll be times where you're in tears Times where you're in pain Times where you'll be like you, you, You'll be confused But all these things Are meant to build you Cause at the end You realize You know what Alhamdulillah, it made me the person who I am today. It made mm-hmm. me the man who I am today. It made me the woman who I am today. Through all those trials and tribulations. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, ask Allah. Know that He will help you. Be certain that He will help you. And be patient in the answer. And don't consistently ask Him. Right? And the best time to ask Allah, there's there's times or awqat, times where Allah accepts a dua. Right? Amongst those times is getting up the last third of the night when everyone's sleeping. Right, and some people say like, if you really want something very badly, then you'll get up at night right? and pray for it. Yeah, and and Ibn Qayyim said, Ibn Qayyim, he 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 made a statement. He said that Allah will not inspire you to make du'a unless He wants to ask your du'a. Because mm-hmm. even think about it, even you making a du'a, who's allowing you to do it? Yeah, Allah's, Allah's allowing you to do it. A lot it. of those times, a lot of the times, like I get distraught, like all these du'as I've been making, this is this, but the fact that I'm still making it all the time, or this, that, the fact that Allah, means Allah wants me to make the yeah, du'a. Yeah, Allah is guiding you to ask Him. Mm-hmm. So, so it's like, look how merciful Allah is. Allah is guiding you to ask Him for things, and He's giving it to you. Mm-hmm. Is that what I'm saying? So it's like, 
you have to really ap- appreciate these things, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it builds you as an individual. So I'll say, get up at night in, in tahajjud, ask Allah, right? Go in a room, make wudu by yourself, cry your eyes out. You know what I'm saying, guys, men can cry too, mm-hmm. right? For Allah, right? You know, the whole red pill, men can't cry. Yeah, guys, yeah. this is the time you cry. You know what I'm saying? Get up at night, cry to Allah, put your hands up, and be sincere about it. Ask Allah, oh Allah, I'm going through A, B, C, and D. Help me out. I want to get th- I want to get A, B, and C, D. Make it easier for me. I want to get married. Oh Allah, if I'm a rich spouse, I want to have children. Oh Allah, bless me with rich offspring. Right? I want I want to take my parents to Hajj, for example. Oh Allah, bless me with the month um, when to go to Hajj. Oh Allah, I, I, I want to do Umrah this year. I've never done Umrah. Allow me to do Umrah. Oh Allah, I need, I need, I need the money. Right? Somehow, some way, your dua will be answered. Just be patient with it and always ask Allah. I'll say, get up at night. Right, another time where dua is accepted is when is when it's raining, right? When you're traveling, in between adhan and the iqama. Now we're in the month of Ramadan, right? The month of Ramadan is Allah accepts du'as from the moment you're fasting to the end of your fast. So from Fajr until until Maghrib, your du'as are accepted. Then your du'as are accepted at the, at the time of breaking fast, right? So example on a Friday, the last hour of Friday is a time where du'as are accepted. And as a fasting person, right, you're, it's you're, like double, you're double, like you're, 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 you're not reject, are, are, are not rejected. Mm-hmm. So like that's the perfect time to ask Allah. Right, those times you always ask Allah. Oh, Allah, I need A, B, C done. Mm-hmm. Ask guys, ask Allah for anything. It might be, it might, it might look so small. Oh, Allah, make me a better runner. Right, someone wants, someone wants to play basketball. Oh, Allah, make me a better basketball player. Like you might think it's stupid, but it's, there's nothing stupid in asking Allah. My mom always told me she's like, anytime you ask, don't even ask. Like, I want to be the best player on my team. No, no, no. Ask to be the best player in the world. Like, be like, I yeah, be yeah, the, have, I have, be have high aspirations. Mm-hmm. Ask Allah, like, I, I want to be the best. Because, like you player. said, Allah, everything for Allah. It's easy. easy, it's easy. Yeah, it's not hard. Ask, like, say, I want to be the top student in my class. Mm-hmm. I want to be the top medical student in Harvard. Mm-hmm. As, as do as easy for Allah, right? Ask him. Of course, exert the effort, right? Yeah. You have to put in some effort. You you, you got to put in the work. But with the work and the effort, and with the, ah, your dreams will come true. So always ask Allah for everything. Now, as I said, this month of Ramadan, there's about like what twelve days left, mm-hmm. 11, 12 days left. Make lots of dua. This is the month of dua. Because if you look at the ayah I read. Uh, the ayah I read uh, In Surah Baqarah mm-hmm. That ayah came after The ayahs of fasting mm-hmm. Which shows how important Making dua is In the month of Ramadan mm-hmm. And there's so much benefits Of making dua Tahajjud While you're fasting At the time of breaking fast So make lots of dua Have a list Have a list of what you want from To ask Allah this Ramadan And just keep on asking Every single day Every single day And just hope that Or have Not, not hope Have this have this certainty That it will come And it will come It will definitely come I mean, it, it might take Time, but it will come. Be patient. Mm-hmm. You you might go through a hard time. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Always, Always. as you all know, in the Mal Usri, Yusra, Yusra. <laughs> there you go, brother. I mean, and thank you again for coming on to the podcast here with me today. Oh, it, man, was, it, was, it was good. It was good experience. to have you, man. It was good to have you, man. Yeah, of course. I, was, I really enjoyed the podcast, man. Guys, make sure you subscribe to Ali, man. He's a good brother. <laughs> thank uh, you. Brother. I want I want to see this blow up, inshallah. Next two to three years, I want to see a million. A inshallah. million subscribers, you know what I'm saying? Inshallah. Because inshallah. money, mashallah, man. It's mm-hmm. good to be here, man. It's good to be here. Inshallah. So thank you guys again for tuning in to another episode of the Oli Canoli Show. Again, today we had Brother Adam. And again, super amazing guy. And again, please leave a bunch of friendly comments down below. So, I mean, like, honestly, just so grateful for having him on here. And I know, I'm more honest, man. I have the honest <laughs> mind, man. The honest <laughs> mind. Trust me. I I love to have the conversation, man. Like, well, I got to be honest with you. It's been what? Like, it's been a long time. I did not feel a minute of it. Mm-hmm. Like like at some point I could talk, but at some point I get tired. With the Ali man, yo, you don't get tired, man. I'm serious, man. Something bothers got a lot about it, man. You don't get tired. He knows how to keep you keep you moving in the conversation, man. So of course. please guys, for for my sake, like this the video, <laughs> share the video, and make sure you follow him with your family and your friends. I want to see this guy blow up, inshallah. In inshallah, inshallah. And if you guys want to be sitting where he's sitting as well, again in the description below, there will be the form to fill out. Please fill it out, and maybe one day you'll be sitting where he's yeah, sitting. Yeah, but as make well. sure make sure you you bring your jacket because cold, man. <laughs> <laughs> freezing. We should bring a sweater or something. You know what I'm saying? Like a beanie, man. I'm cold. Exactly. But man, alhamdulillah, thank you for everything, bro. Jazakallah khair, man. Appreciate it. Inshallah, we'll see you inshallah tonight. Inshallah, jazakallah khair, man. Inshallah, and thank you guys again. Habib.